Welcome back to another episode of Rock Talk. Alright guys, quick interruption. Shout out to one of our sponsors, Prize Picks. As you guys know, I like to sweat. I like to gamble. I'm not telling you guys you need to gamble. If you do gamble, please gamble responsibly. But everybody who uses promo code BRAD on Prize Picks, you guys get basically they match your deposit. So if you put in a hundred bucks, they give you a hundred bucks. Um, is it up to a hundred bucks? Okay, it's up to a hundred bucks. So up to a hundred bucks. If you put a hundred dollars in, they're gonna give you a hundred dollars back. Now, I think if it's $100 and one, you're probably still only getting $100 when they match you on that deposit. But use promo code BRAD when you sign up. Download Prize Picks today. And basically, like, check this out. I just genuinely have more fun watching, like, the fights. Even if it's, like, I'm just, like, friendly betting with my buddies. Um, obviously, guys, you can lose money. You can win money. Again, please do it responsibly. Um, I do it sometimes irresponsibly. And it's because I like the sweat. But again, this is very, very important. If you guys are going to do surprise picks, make sure that you understand that you play with the money you're willing to lose. Okay, very important. Don't play with money if you're not okay with losing it. Like I've said before, it's like, yo, you want to go to Disneyland, spend $400 on a ticket to go to Disneyland. You spend that $400, you know you're coming to Disneyland. You're playing, you're playing the games, you're riding the rides, but you're losing that money. So the same thing with gambling, okay? But if you guys want to do it, please do it responsibly. Go to Prize Picks, use promo code BRAD, download it today. The link will be in the description, in the bio. Um, yeah, let's get back into this podcast. Go ahead, they left the door open. What's See, up, man, what's up, it's been a long time. I came here, but I ain't here to get in. Buff ass, buff ass Bradley. Nah, not even, dude. But how many years has it been? Shit, bro, I'm about to move out here, bro. It's the best place in the world. Yeah, yeah fuck it. Well, I'm all over. I'm back in Miami all the time, but yeah. there's nothing like this area. Hello. Hello. Okay, so welcome back to another episode of Raw Talk. Uh, this is a really special episode. I have Mike Rashid with me, and bro, first and foremost, how long have we known each other? I have to it's, say like 2012 or 13, something like that. It's been a fuck ton of years, man. Yeah. And you you are one of the original, I would, I would say, like some of the original creators on YouTube in the fitness industry. Mike Rashid, C.T. Fletcher, Rich Piana, um, who else really stood out to you? Well, well, actually, we like the second wave. The, we are the second wave. The first wave was like Chris Jones. Chris Jones. Uh, Physique's of Greatness. Yes. Um, it was a dude named Scooby, I think. Sco I don't even remember it. was like an older dude with a big ass chest. Okay, Scooby. It's weird. But uh, the twins. The Hodge twins. Yeah. yeah. Um, who else? It was a whole wave of dudes before us. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I feel like Rich Piana was really the one who set the tone on what like YouTube could be fitness. He was the first guy, cause I know he came out of, um, mutant. yeah, he came out of mutant yeah. and they had this high production value in videos. Right. And then he translated that like on his own into YouTube. Right. Um, do you, do you like, like where you're at right now in relationship to where you were, um, do you have, like has your relationship to making content changed? Yeah, it's changed a cause lot. Cause it's been like fucking. Yeah. First of all, like back then when I was doing stuff, you know, it's 10 years ago, yeah. you know what I mean? Um, I was beating up my body like crazy, Yeah. you know? So that kind of, that me performing on that level is not sustainable. No. It's not, you yeah. know? Like bro, I would, like it'd be night, I go to bed and I wake up, like I'd be in this little dream state, but almost awoke with ideas of like a, a, a video. That was back then, like yeah. bro, I can't wait to go to the gym today. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. They would make me nervous, these ideas, you know what I'm saying? So, but yeah, nah, I would hurt myself. Like yeah. I've torn a pec, I've torn my bicep. You know, I've had my, my fair share of injuries. Nothing major though, you know yeah. what I mean? Uh, shoulder shit, whatever. I probably need surgery now, but I don't, I'm not, yeah. go, I'm not getting checked. You know what I mean? Fuck that, I'm not doing it either. So, but over time it's like, yo, and I'm not in the gym all day anymore. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, I got things to do like you do, right? We run in businesses. So um, part of me, I ain't gonna lie, Part of me, I love doing content though, right? yeah. but I also, I really don't need to, you know what I'm saying? I've set myself up in a way to where I really don't need to, 
but I like doing it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I still do it. Um, I went, I've taken my hiatuses, yeah. you know, but I'm still, I'm still in it. I'm like actually re recharged at it. You know what I'm saying? You feel, you feel more like coming back. You want to yeah. come back to it more. Yeah. 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 And I've been lately, you know? Yeah. Cause mm-hmm. I saw you do some podcast stuff, which is why like, I think you tagged me in something, in your story. And it was like an old, old video of ours. Yeah. And you posted it. Yeah. And instantly I was like, Oh fuck, I want to have this. And I remember this conversation with you. And then I remember, um, you've done some podcast stuff more recently. Mm-hmm. I think I saw some stuff with Kevin Gates. Yeah, Kevin Gates. Uh, uh, I got a lot of dope podcast episodes, right? Uh, I've been doing podcasts for like three or four years yeah. on a low, but, um, but and very inconsistently. Yeah, I was when I first started as yeah, well. Yeah, so now I'm starting to be more consistent. Uh, what is your podcast? Do you have one now? Yeah, it's called Lions, Owls, and Elephants. Okay. It means nothing. <laughs> he's just it a cool nothing. name. Just People cool think name. like, oh, what's the meaning? Like, no, I just like them. You just I like those animals. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I, I I enjoy doing that the most, podcasting. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Me too, man. So um you've been in the in the game for so long. Like you've you've seen it all, you've done it all. Uh what do you think about like the current state of this whole I I know I got an I got an opinion on it right now, but what is the, what do you think the current state of the fitness industry's content in relationship to you know everything that we've done and kind of how people are moving through it now? I think we're still the gatekeepers. You know what I mean? There's nobody because you I think like when we all came up, it was shocking. Like what the fuck? Well, because it like didn't... that like that video with us. Yeah, that was like 16 sets of heavy bench pressing. You know what I'm saying? We were fucking crazy. Where, and like you got to think about like why these videos did well. The editing, the music, that one was just raw lifting, but usually some cool music beats. We dress cool. You know, we're being, it's like cool dudes, not like the bodybuilder pants, the tank top. You know what I'm saying? It's like, it's like more relatable. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So there's been no, I haven't seen anything that's blown me away. Yeah. Nothing. Like it's just boring. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. There's a lot of, uh, it seems like it's a lot of, monkey see monkey do now at this right, point there's 100%. not a lot of and it makes sense though because over time you know the kids growing up saw the stuff and like oh i want to be like this or do like this yeah. and then it's a lot of repetitive type of content like you know right. i mean even the uh, the invent of tiktok and how it even pushes like a sound you copy a sound and it's trending and you just copy Everybody another sound yeah. but no i think it's i think it's interesting because there's definitely a new wave but um i think it's almost more rare for someone to come out of that wave or out of these waves and like really create uh you know, a real brand, like such as yourself, like mm-hmm. what what we've done. I'm not right. trying to sit here and be like, yeah, look at me, I've done really cool shit, but I'm, I'm really- You have, we have. You know I appreciate I mean? it, yeah. I just don't see, I see like a lot of people more like coming and going now instead of like coming and staying. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. What do you think that is, is why do you think that's happening? The cream rises, bro. Like, I mean, there's plenty of people from our, like when we like really hit that ain't around no more. Yeah. Not even in shape no more, you know what I'm saying? So. It's just the fabric of who you are, you know? Yeah. Like, uh, I was talking to my brother Amir today, and we were talking about his brother. His brother making a ton of money with real estate, right? Yeah. And I'm like, it makes sense, because we all like, even if it's a different field, we all connected. Certain people are connected with certain fibers, certain yeah. types of fabric that, you know, they're gonna excel in whatever space they're in. Yeah. If you wasn't in this, wherever you be at, you'd be excelling. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I agree. Like, I remember somebody was trying to say, like, oh, man, I wonder what everybody be doing if it wasn't no social media. I was like, the people that's rich would still be rich. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, just a different way to get there. Different way to get it. Yeah. Like, because everybody's doing social media. Yeah. But most people ain't, ain't, ain't killing it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. What, what, go, oh, sorry, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. What has social media taught you about success? Wow. Um, social media, and I'm sure you can relate to this, it is a, a like you as a, an influencer, me as an influencer, whoever, we're like, we have like a microcosm of the world, of the population of people, right? Yeah. You know, I'm sure you you can see, you can look at your sales and look at all your marketing analytics and see how predictable human behavior is. It's extremely be- predictable, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Um, you know, with that comes, I feel like comes great responsibility that people are trusting me or trusting you. Like, what should I do? Yeah. What what time should I go to bed for the gangs? How uh, often should I eat? Like, like even my girl, like my girl asked me like, what should I wear? I'll go and find her something to wear, even if I don't want to. Like people are giving us power. You yeah. know what I'm saying? 
So I don't squander that and I don't like take that lightly. I appreciate it. Yeah. So it'd be a lot of shit that people may think is annoying, annoying question, whatever. I answer that shit. I'm right there with them. So it taught me like to handle responsibility properly because listen, these people are affording us a great life. Absolutely. A dream. You yeah. know what I mean? We live a dream. So I respect that. I respect them. And just like the expos, man, like <laughs> I would hate the slow drip. Like when this long line is cool, I'm hyped up. Yeah. But then at the end of the day, it's like six people left. You ready to go? One come, one fill it up. Yeah. One come, and it stay like that for like another I love hour. those days though, man. Those but are the, the best. But the slow drip, I stay. I'm not leaving. But yeah. it's the most difficult thing because yeah. you think you see the end of the tunnel, but you don't. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So, but I I respect these people yeah. a lot. So, yeah, about success, social media, <laughs> is it's just magnifying reality. It magnifies real the real world you yeah know what I'm saying? you said something that i think was really important about the responsibility uh that like certain influencers have in a space because right. to me it might seem silly when someone asks me how many hours should i sleep and what should i eat because to me i know those answers very definitely because i've been practicing it for so long but the person asking me that maybe they're just like they fucking know. second week in the gym and they're yeah. trying to figure it out mm -hmm. what do you think about influencers who use their influence for bad because there's a lot of people yeah. in this industry now mm. who build their brands off of tearing other people down i hate that i hate those people like i'm a peaceful person but you know like my default settings is violent is angry is yeah. you know destructive and i can relate and i be wanting to destroy people like that yeah. i be wanting to be alone with people like that and like i want to have a show bro <laughs> we just do this a show called like why people that do fucked up shit like sit down why i want to know yeah. what got you to this point yeah you know what i'm saying but but nah i don't i don't like it i don't like it uh so if people doing shit i don't like it, i just ignore them yeah if it's close to me and i talk to them you know what i'm saying but i don't like it i'm not gonna go public trying to smash like bash anybody like yeah fuck that shit people they try to throw me in that shit like these, these people it's like you like and they're never like big creators right so they want clout. They want a, the back and forth, get some fans. Yeah. Impo it'll never happen. First of all, this doesn't even bother me. Like, you might get slapped if you're in my presence, right? But I'll never utter your name. Well, the funny thing is, like, these are the people who, they always do it. Like, in my case, it's always been people who I've never actually met in person, mm -hmm. never actually talked to. Right. And if I did, then it was cool. And then the minute that, like, they can get some sort of benefit from talking shit, they do it mm -hmm. on the sideline. Right. And I just find it interesting. It's like, it's like, a person could just try to talk to you and be like, hey, what's going on? But right. they, it's almost like this power struggle where that person is trying to leverage, obviously, your name or your brand or my name, my brand for their own benefit. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting because it's like, I don't think the audience really sees that for what it is. I think they just go, oh, this person said this about this person. So maybe it's true. Um, and it's, it's kind of shitty because it's like someone just trying to slingshot themselves off of someone else's success. It's, that's exactly what they're doing. Listen, it's so egregious when I've seen it a lot for me, like, It'll look like my video, a good picture of me, my name in the title. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. People are going to click on it. You know what I mean? I've had people, you remember with the Miami situation, uh, with the gym. With the gym, yeah. Like, I, I literally had nothing to do with this guy, right? My partner, my business partner, for his, that illegal business. But there were people, like, trying to make documentaries, Mike Rashid. Well, because you were the big name in that. Right. But yeah. it's like, it's, it's silly, for one. But one thing that do exist is there's a lot of weak people that hate strong people. So when it looked like a strong person is down, they all gather together like, yeah, yeah, I knew it. And I'm like, first of all, for those who don't know, my old business partner sold steroids as a doctor, but he wasn't a doctor. We all thought he was a doctor. I thought he was a doctor. I bought it from him. Fuck. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But he wasn't. So he was under investigation and the feds came and got him. So people try to associate him with me, like I was selling steroids. First of all, I have legitimate businesses, multi-million dollar businesses. I don't have to sell steroids, for one. For two, at the time, I was just beating all my cases for my old shit from back in the day. It would be so stupid of me, right? Yeah. For three, y'all talk about steroids like y'all don't, like all y'all motherfuckers take steroids. Yeah. You act, it ain't like it's pedophilia, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, they real was acting, fucked up shit. They was acting like it was the, war. oh my God, Mike Rashid, steroids in his gym. I'm like, all right, bro, yeah, it's like whatever. But one thing I, I always have faith in is like, fuck it. 
keep talking. When the dust settles, I'm still here. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And those yeah. people that were actually making content, trying to like really make me look bad, they're gone. Yeah. You know, you can't, that's not a solid foundation. No, it's a ter- it's a fucking terrible foundation. I mean, right. it's like, that. I said it, I've said it before. It's like, imagine I was trying to get to the top and on my way to the top, I'm firing at everybody who's on the way up there. And then yeah. what, what am I, what am I standing on top of? Right. A bunch of fucking angry people who are like, fuck this guy. And at the same time, like, who do you even share with if you fucked everyone else over on the way up there? And then if, if that's how you get there, what happens to you? Yeah. And yeah. Well, it's like, where do you go from there? Because if but, you're, but it's karma, like that, that energy you put out is going to come right back and slap you in the yeah. face. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I, I struggle with that idea so much. Cause like you said, my default setting is violence, mm. but like, I know that I can't, mm. you know, I, I'd love to in certain situations, but I know that it's like, I have a lot more to lose. Right. And I struggle with the karma thing because you know, everyone tells me they're like, you know, just karma's gonna take care of it. Karma's gonna take care of it. And like, I have this like fucking urge where I'm like, I just want to fucking take care of it. Like, I want to speak more on things. Is it when it's directed at you or just stuff that you observe? Like it's when the, it's the, the negativity directed at you? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's like, dude, like, there's so much like in certain situations that man, if I just sat and told the story, right. everything would change. But then I go like, is it worth it? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, it's not worth giving that energy because I've I've done it in the past, like, and it's wasting energy on worthless people, and the people that will believe silly shit like that, fuck them, or I'm not gonna say fuck them. They just don't understand. You yeah. know what I mean? And one day they will. They're gonna see you next week, next month, next year, two years, still growing, still ascending. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And it's like, what, what do we, what do we, what are y'all holding on to? You know what I mean? Yeah. And what if we did make mistakes? Who the fuck's perfect? Yeah. It's like people are out there virtue signaling. People are acting like they're angels. Well, that's the thing I, I really don't like. Like, I've been in cases, situations where, like, people will talk bad about me. And mm-hmm. I'm like, wait, what the fuck? And they'll, like, play a victim. And it's a very it's very clearly done with intentions to make themselves look better. Where it's like, where, where was this energy when I spoke to you in person? It wasn't there. It was gone. Mm-hmm. And right. then, like, people are like, why did you do this? It's like, what? This guy just got on the internet and used fucking clickbait yeah, title, and now I'm worst. having to respond to some I really shit. hate that when, talk to me. Don't go and, well, Bradley just, <clears throat> like, nah, you know me, talk to me. Me and Rob Bailey was just talking about this the other day. Yesterday, um, he seen Charlemagne the guy in the airport. Yeah. I was like, oh, that's dope. Like, how was he in person? He's like, he's cool as fuck. And I was like, I don't agree with, with I, no, I said, I used to didn't like him, but I love that motherfucker now because I'm why like. Why didn't you like him? Because I don't know, I thought he was negative. You know what I'm yeah. saying? But I like him because he's real. He's himself. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And he does a lot of good. And he, he said, I agree. He says, yeah, we don't have to always agree with each other. I said, exactly. I think it's weird for people to just agree with everything. For sure. Fake people, real people can tell you, like, I don't like that shit. I don't like when you say X, Y, Z. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Fake people ain't going to say that shit. Fake people will know that it's, will have, will have issues like bad issues, because I've had it in the fitness industry. Yeah. Like, yo, we need to sit down. You know what I'm saying? Well, see me out and, hey, Mike. I'm like, nah, bro. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and every time I'm like, nah, that's, bro. Nah, that ain't cool. Watch out. That's the frustrating part. It's so weird. It's so bizarre. Have you ever had any experiences like that outside of the fitness industry? Because I'm wondering if it's like, is it? A, I don't it, know. I, I feel like I've been so engulfed in this shit for so long. Yeah. And everybody I know is in it. So, I just wonder, yeah. and I, it's, I, when I message you about doing the podcast, I wonder if it's like related to the, like the masculine, like egotistical kind of nature of this industry. Because I know that this happens in every industry. I know that yeah. like the shit talk, it doesn't matter if you're music, whatever the fuck it is, people, people go at each other for whatever, right? Mm. Um, but do you think it has to do with the fact that it is so like, you know, how I look driven. It's, it's, it's ego, nah. like how strong I am, what I look like. I think the opposite. I think the fakeness, like the one and shake hands when there's issues behind the, behind, behind the scene. I think that's like really insecure, weak people who are not comfortable standing in their own flesh and be like, um, I'm cool. I don't like that motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's okay to not like a motherfucker. You yeah, know what I'm saying? It's, it's fine. It don't mean we gotta fight. Yeah. We just ain't got to fuck with each other. That's fine. Like, that's normal. You know what I mean? I don't expect to get along with everybody. I think I get along with mostly everybody, right? Yeah. But if me and somebody don't get along, and I'm and there's one person I'm thinking of in particular who tried to shake my hand at uh, Body Power or some shit in England, and i like, in front of all these people, i like, nah, bro, it ain't cool. Watch out. Because <laughs> he, he did some other shit. He did some foul shit. I'm yeah. like, nah, bro, watch out. Get out of here. 
What was his and reaction? You don't got to say the just, person's he name. He just like kind of put his head down and walked off. But I still felt bad for him and went and talked to him later. Yeah. And you know, kind of squashed it. We talked about the issue. <laughs> you know, people were kind of spinning the story to make it benefit them. He really couldn't because it was so bad, egregious yeah. what he did. But we still talked about it. And he's a human, he ain't perfect, like fuck it. And listen, people, the issue with that was a greed thing. He fucked somebody I care about over bad, right? Because of greed. And fuck, it ain't cool, but shit, people are people. Yeah. When they getting get to it, grabbing that money, whatever, if they see a vulnerability, sometimes they expose that shit. They, they, yeah. they, they make it, you know, they, they see a little opening and they just make it wider and just take. So let's talk about this, because that, that makes me think of some shit in my life, but I'm not, I don't really want to get too much into it, but right. I'm curious though, I guess this is more of a personal, one of my own personal questions. Say that's happened to you many times, like you've been sort of fucked over, you've been mm -hmm. taken advantage of. Mm -hmm. um, how have you, um, if you've been, you know, you, I know you've been in that, in that situation, how have you <clears throat> allowed yourself to continue to be open to you know, business partners, friendships, et cetera, even though you've gone through those things? To be honest, um, I've been fucked over literally, like actually fucked over once, okay. just once. Um, and I wanted to do bad things to these guys. You know what I'm saying? Oh yeah. I'm calling them, I'm like, yo, what does your wife think? You told your wife this story? Like, how did you tell the story? Like, I'm going hard, right? But, you know, everybody was like, stop, just chill. One thing I've learned is that I'm a powerful person in terms of energy. I got a lot of energy, right? And that shit can be very beautiful if it's directed in a positive space. Right. And a negative space is very destructive. And it be it could be an incident to where somebody fucked me over and I lash out and I'm worse than them because I'm so much, I'm a lot to deal with. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I end up being the back, I'm wrong now. Like whatever they did to me is not even a forget about it. Look what you did to them, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I've learned from bumping my head like that. So that's happened before, so I learned, I grew out of that. So like those guys that, that fucked me over, I'm thinking about, I just, I held myself back. It was hard, you know what I'm saying? But those guys are, I don't know where they're at. They're done. Yeah. They were making a ton of money at that time, you know what I'm saying? They're done. So what I've learned is when somebody fuck you over, step back. As long as your hands are clean, your conscience is clean, just step back. And they will unravel themselves. Yeah. Like the universe is fair. Sometimes I just want to speed that shit up though. I feel you bro, but it's, it's like, I, it's happened enough times to where I know it's fine. Like everything's fine. Yeah. I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. I feel bad that they felt the need to have to do some sh shady shit like that. Cause yeah. I would never do that kind of shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I know you dealt with stuff in your past. Like, um, like you said you were dealing with, uh, you know, when you're talking about the whole steroid story in the gym, mm -hmm. you were already dealing with cases. What was right. like the most significant uh, thing that you ever had to deal with legally? I mean, shit, my case, like, you know, it was a body. Yeah. You know, it was self-defense, but I had to defend, I had to prove, I mean, it was, it was pretty obvious, but you know, they scared me, you know what I'm saying? The, the government, and so I went on the run. Yeah. Like when you met me, when everybody met me, I was a fugitive. Yeah, I remember, you know yeah. I remember. Nobody knew at the time. That's so funny. Right, right. <laughs> and it was weird that I was on social media because I didn't want, that wasn't the plan. It happened by accident. You know what yeah, I'm how did that happen? I was posting like clients, you know what I'm saying? Their progress, you know what I mean? Yeah. First it was Facebook, and then it was Facebook and IG. Man, what a, what a fucking simple, beautiful time. Right, Fuck. and YouTube, then YouTube, and YouTube was like, this is great. I could like show there, instead of a before and after picture, I could show when Jen, can only do one pull up. Now she could do ten. That's impressive. Yeah, it's getting me more clients. And once in a blue, like, yeah, I throw a video of myself up there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And people loved it. You know what I'm saying? So it started going viral. So I'm like, oh, maybe they don't care. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Maybe yeah. it's cool. Cause my 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 audience was all cops. Yeah, that's so. Funny. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> cops and military. They love that hardcore shit, hardcore yeah. training, and that mentality. So I'm like, maybe they don't care. But listen, I tell you this. At the end of the day, when I finally had to face my, my charges and when I'm sitting in front of the judge and it was time for me to like, I'm going to prison or not, there was cops on my side speaking on my behalf and you yeah. never see that, you know what I'm saying? So, it, you know, that the time that I was a fugitive, it was, I, I seen it as a grace period for me to prove to myself that I'm not a, a criminal or a bad person. Yeah. And I, and I proved it, I made the right decisions. My father always told me this. He said, son, we're people of character and you don't build character in good times, you build it in hard times. It's a fact. 
when shit is rough. All right, now what you gonna do? You ain't got no money, what you gonna do? You gonna go steal? You gonna go lie to get some? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. No, you go get a fucking job. You humble yourself, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's what I did, like everything that I did, it was a lot of decisions, a lot of crossroads, a bunch of crossroads, right? And my fear and my anger and my emotions wanted me to go this way, but I would just go this way. It's Have you ever fucked up though? I'm assuming some of these crossroads you had to fuck on up. On those roads, I didn't. I fucked up. I made mistakes in my life. Of course, we all have. But during that period, bro, I kept it pure because the stakes were way too high. Yeah. Because it wasn't like a year in prison. It was like 15 years. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And that was without the, the uh, fugitive enhancement. It, it's a thing called FOJ enhancement, fugitive of justice. You embarrass the government and you cost us a lot of money because we had to come find you. So whatever you get is aggravated. So if you get in 15 years, you probably do 20, 22 years. You they add on to it. They add on. Just like my bond initially was 180 grand. But after they came and got me, it was 500 grand. Isn't the paying bonds, is it only like a percent that you have to pay? 10%, like, yeah. but 50 grand is a lot, a lot For to pay sure. versus 18. Yeah. And you gotta have that kind of collateral. Yeah. You gotta have that. You know what's funny you said about the um, the cops being on your side because they probably watch your content. Mm -hmm. I remember when I was dealing with the whole the state of California suing zoo culture for being right. open. Mm -hmm. The whole time, like I had the cops who were like trying to talk to the judge and be like, yo, this is fucking stupid. Like right. let this guy go. And eventually yeah. I think it helped out because what I ended up doing was like working with the actual police department and some of the like the first responders. Right. Um, not necessarily for a dismissal, but like in, in lieu of doing anything else, which is right. like, hey, like this was kind of because we came to the conclusion that like we were washing our hands of it and it was kind of stupid. Mm -hmm. And so I, I basically was like, well, I'm, I'll make sure I'll like do this stuff with some of the first responders. But did you during that whole COVID thing, what did you think? I, I guess my question is when you, when it was like three, four months in, this is like the beginning of COVID. Did you see it for what it was? Like, like the bullshit yeah. of what it was? Well, in the beginning, no, I, I was like, like everybody else. Scared. Like, oh shit. What is this? Yeah. But then I research a lot. Like in my office, like we are like, we become legit researchers on everything. Right. <laughs> yeah. So, cause, because of the types of products, just, the type of products that we produce. Yeah. So, now, I just like learning shit, and I know how to research shit, right? Yeah. So I was really fascinated by this COVID shit, right? So I just researched viruses and reading everything I could, and I'm like, this shit ain't that bad. Yeah. It's a cold. It's a new cold, another cold, you know what I'm saying? So, and I've had bad shit. I have pneumonia before, you know what I'm yeah. saying? So I'm like, I ain't scared of this shit, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, the more you research, you start, all right, I see what it is. Now, maybe three, four months, I, I got it but I didn't care. I wasn't tripping because here's the thing. It's about money. Yeah, well that's... It's, it's not about nobody wanting to control you just to... It's about fucking money. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I get it, I guess. And I had to be honest with myself because you know, in a hospital, just like jail, it's interesting. You know, all of these entities get subsidies from the government for every person. Yep. Right? Now, with COVID, it's a new thing, so it's extra money being given for each person with COVID. Yes. Like a lot more, like the difference of like $100 or $2,000, you know exactly. what I'm saying? Yeah, I remember reading about all this shit. That's good business. That's why, it, that, that's the thing that fucked me up is that, but most people when they heard about all this stuff, they were just so uh, enamored with the fear of it. Right. That they don't look any further, they just look like if you're not listening to what they're saying, you're doing something wrong. Right. And I remember going through this whole COVID thing and I remember knowing in the beginning, I was like, I remember thinking to myself, how the fuck are they ever gonna prove, like if they said, you know, close you down your gym because of COVID, right? right? Whereas like Costco and all these other places are open. It's completely fine. It's yeah. like, but my gym has to close. The mom and pop's gotta yeah. close. It never made sense to me. And I was like, okay, like if I went to court, wouldn't they have to prove that like my gym was a problem? So like, are they gonna isolate a single person who got COVID and then prove that they never went anywhere else and they got right. COVID from the gym versus like. But here's the thing is like gyms don't have, there's no big gym conglomerates. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. There's grocery conglomerates. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. They're gonna stay open. They got enough firepower and enough influences with their money to be like lean on these politicians. Yeah. Like, I'm I'm friends with politicians now. I got friends that are politicians. I understand this shit. Yeah. So none of it bothers me. I get it. I like oh, yeah. This is what they're gonna do. This is yeah. what they. It's what they've always done. This is what they. This is how the world is. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We can like change, change. Nothing's gonna change. However, I think that. 
generation after generation collectively people's consciousness is rising for sure you know what i'm saying and yeah. it'll be different maybe not in our lifetime but things will change what do you think are some of the biggest driving factors in that consciousness rising because i agree with you 100 yeah. percent. i mean think about our species of human right is around two hundred thousand years old right yeah um so but we've been kind of civilized maybe ten thousand years right so the amount of time we've been on this planet, only a blip, we've been kind of civilized. 10,000 years, but 100 years ago, women couldn't vote. 200 years ago, black people were slaves. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. So you see, like, we're not that civil. So when you go further down this, the timeline, it's like a spectrum of us being animals, because we are animals, right? Yeah. But us act behaving like animals, to us being evolved beings, evol evolved humans, right? Yeah. With empathy, with with uh you know self-awareness with uh more consciousness consciousness yeah. right so you know as time goes on people become better yeah i agree you know what i'm saying people become a little smarter um a little wiser a little uh they care about others more you know what i'm saying yeah so just like i mean shit, <laughs> they were telling they were telling like the colonists was telling motherfuckers through science that black people were just animals we gotta we gotta look we gotta like save them and let them work for us you know what i'm saying and people was so, buying it but then after after a while it wasn't like black people didn't get free because we wanted to be free it was other white people like yo this is fucked up bro yeah but it took time you know what i'm saying yeah. so with time things get better and people become better more evolved you know what i mean yeah i wish we could accelerate that process but it is what it is yeah I think people that are somewhat evolved have more fun when everybody else saying, you know what I'm saying? For sure. Yeah. I think it's because you're, you're, you're open, your willingness to like more possibilities and opportunities are there because you're right. less focused on maybe what's happening to you yeah. and what you're capable of doing outwardly. Because thing, look, things will happen, right? So we have a super fucking power, bro. Facts. A superpower called perspective. Yeah. I always say only good things happen to me. There's not one incident in my life that someone can put, say this was bad. I, I could tell you how that shit was dope. That was good, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I consciously go into any situation, if it's not ideal, I make it ideal. I ride the wave. As much as you can. Yeah, I don't let, like, I don't, like, like in jail, they say don't, don't like, let the time do you, you do the time. Like, nothing happens to me. I happen to it, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Nothing gives me a bad day. If I have a bad day because I'm being weak and allowing my emotions to flavor my behavior in a silly way, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I recognize it and snap out of it. But, you know, for me, that takes a lot of inner work, you know? But, um, but yeah, I think everything is smooth. At, at what point in your life did you start to become more aware of consciousness and the thought of these things? Because, like, to people listening, they're probably like, what the fuck are you? Some people are right. for sure like, what the fuck are you talking about? Yeah. I fully relate and I fully understand to like mm. the power of your thought, the perception right. of what's happening to you, the intentions, the words that you speak, the things. I totally understand that. My whole life is is a depiction of that. In fact, like you said, snapping out of certain moments, I like when I was in my worst in my life is when like I didn't pull myself out of it. And it mm. wasn't because just things were happening to me. It's because I wasn't fucking pulling myself out of it. Right. So at, at what point in your life were you realizing oh shit these things are a lot more important than everything else i guess whenever i would when you asked me about those crossroads when i would make the wrong decision like each one of those lessons that i failed i learned I, it was like damn i failed that test i would consciously be saying like fuck i failed the test today yeah you know what i'm saying and i don't like failing i don't like losing so i you know when you go through so many things i've been through a lot of shit in my life right I'm a risk taker. I'm a very dominant, headstrong, let's go type of person, right? So with that, it's a lot of fly shit that people see, but they don't see a lot of the hardship that I deal with because I'm always putting myself out there, yeah. right? So, but me putting myself out there so much and enduring so many things that are not ideal, you learn from that shit. Yeah. And you know what it looked like every, the next time you deal with it, you know what I'm yeah. saying? So the next time you deal with it, you make a better decision. You yeah. Know what I'm saying? So, I, so I have a friend who I, I explain the same thing to this person mm. they're younger and they don't seem to see good in in bad situations and yeah. i could say hey i know there's good like for example just 
the, the one that I always talk about, like my father passing. It took me 20 years for me, because it happened when I was six, for me to start to be like, wow, this kind of makes sense. Mm -hmm. And I can look at this differently for the, for the betterment of myself and people around me. Mm -hmm. But it took me 20 years to realize that. So to the people who listen to this and they're like, the fuck are you talking about? Like, you know, my dog died or my mom died or my whatever, my brother died or my, my close friend died. There's no good in this, mm -hmm. right? To so those people who are at that point, what sort of advice would you give them? And I'll, and I'll chime in on this too. What sort of advice would you give them to create good as soon as possible? Right. Well, I'm not going to say as soon as possible, yeah. especially a situation when somebody dies, you lose somebody you love. It takes time. Because I lost somebody I love and the shit is, was hard, bro. It's still hard right now. Yeah. Right. But and I, I sat in it like, fuck it. I'm going to sit in this. I'm going to be I'm going to be sad. Like, you know, I didn't allow it to um, paralyze me from getting up and working and training and all of these things because I'm not a loser. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I'm not letting nothing hold me back from progress, right? So, but emotionally, I had to wear that shit, and I cried a lot, bro. Honestly, yeah, I fucking cried a lot. You know what I'm saying? I remember one day I'm in the sauna. I go, I went a little bit late. We got a little crew. We go like, we go train at like seven in the morning. I went like seven thirty, so everybody was way done before me. So I'm in the sauna by myself, and I fucking, I'm like, yo, I'm the saddest person on the planet. I feel like crying right now. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna know, but you're good. You're I good. was like, I'm the saddest person on the planet right now, and I fucking weeped. But fuck it, I needed to do that. Yeah, because you all that shit in is not good. You yeah. know what I mean? But you have to be strong enough to keep getting up every day and doing the work. Yeah, going to the gym, call your mom. Like I didn't want to talk to nobody, but I was, you know, and for a minute I didn't. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I started getting out of that. I started really trying harder and harder and harder. And I would just tell my friends, like, yo, bro, I'm not good right now. You know what I'm saying? And then I got tired of telling them that shit because I know they probably getting tired of me hearing, tired of hearing it. Right. So I started getting better and better. And over time, I got good with everything. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Still miss this person. I'm not going to ever lie about my feelings. Of course. I have no ego with matters of the heart or with people I love and care There's about. There's no use in that. None. So they be like, you still But miss? you know this because how old are you? I'm 45. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you know this through, through a lot of time, a lot of experience. Right. That's the thing, because I know a lot of people listening to this may not be 30, 45, mm -hmm. may not be 35. They may be fucking 21, 19, 18. I know there's a, I do have a generally older demographic, but mm -hmm. um, like you said, I think it's really important for people to hear it again is sitting in it, like being in that. But at the same time, like you also said, don't, don't like, don't sulk. Like you do have to make movements. You can't just wake right. up every day and be like, I'm going to be sad because I'm sad. Right. Be sad, feel it, cry. Don't yeah. be afraid to tell someone, you know, who's also important to you. Hey, this is how I feel. Like you right. said, reaching out to friends. Right. This is all essential. But like at the end of the day, at least once a day, try and do something to like pick yourself up. If it's like, okay, I'm going to spend the next hour and I'm going to, I'm going to try to plan you know, what I want to do with the next six months, or right. I'm going to fucking read this book. That's a self improvement book or something that's helping you step like even if it's just inch by inch away from like that that daily fuck this sucks mentality you know what really helps me do you meditate always that helps me so much bro. yeah so much so i meditate I've, I've been meditating since about 2015 and it's funny because i learned how to meditate in anger management <laughs> and the teacher the instructor he never called it meditation he said breathing exercises right? right and then i was in a situation one time when i needed that shit and I did, I was in the middle of an airport. I just like, I just stopped, I didn't care how I looked and worked on my breathing uh, 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 exercises. And I was good for like a week, like just easy, just peaceful. Wait, you know after that, in the airport moment? That, or? that moment, yeah. Okay. That was my first time really meditating, but I didn't even know it was meditating. Outside but, of him and anger management telling Yeah, him. but in the class I wasn't, I'd probably fall asleep. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, fuck it's this. boring in there, yeah. you know, so, but, but I went in with an open mind listening to him, you know what I'm saying? But I guess in that moment I didn't need it. Right, but yeah. when I was in the airport that one particular day, I needed to just chill because I was hot, and I did, and I've been doing it ever since. And then I started learning about meditation. I'm like, oh, this was meditation, and I appreciated him so much because he gave, he was giving it to dudes who would not want to hear that shit in a digestible way. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. To where we still received it, and I well, I know most people didn't, but I at least I got it. You know what I mean? Yeah. And fuck, I live by it, bro. I live by it. When I'm not meditating, I'm off. You know what I'm yeah. saying? But I, I'm, I'm an avid uh, believer in meditation. I always find it funny how it's always, it's like, you know, in school when they're like, yo, you gotta read this book. And you're like, 
not reading that fucking book. And then, but then when you find the book on your own outside of school, you're like, wow, right. I needed this right, book. Right, right, right. Yeah. Even like T, he'll tell me about a show or something. I remember back in the day, I always talk about this Dave Chappelle. He's like, Dave Chappelle. I'm like, man, fuck that guy, right? This fuck is, Dave Chappelle? No, nah, nah, this is years when we, okay. when he, we first I love found Dave out about it. I love him too. Okay. Like, that's my guy. But anything that's new, I don't want to hear nothing about it. Or, <laughs> or if people tell me about it, and then I'll fuck around and find it on my own. Like, oh shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, but, uh, but yeah, I'm the same way. You Meditate. tell me, you tell me, just like when I learned how to drive, yeah. like stick, my friends try to show me, I'm like, yeah, I can't get it. Now I went out the next day by myself, it was figured it out easy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Remember the couple things they said and you know. Yeah. So meditating, how do you meditate? How do you practice it? I practice what's called mindfulness meditation. Okay. And um, it's, it's basically, it's a practice of being so in the moment. So I sit somewhere quiet, but I can, I've gotten to where I can do it in places that's not quiet as well. Um, and I, I close my eyes or not. If there's a lot of people around, I don't want to look weird. So they, if I'm just sitting there chilling, they don't know I'm meditating. You know what I'm yeah. saying? But typically I like to do it alone and I close my eyes and I just focus on my breathing in through my nose, out through my mouth. Um, I focus on nothing but the breathing. You know what I'm saying? And the exercise is when thoughts are coming, I blow them shits out. I'm, mm -mm. Yeah, let them go. I keep them out there, and that's the exercise. And then I have this focal point that that I start to see. Without my eyes, I see in my like inner mind's eye, and it's right in the. It's, I call it the center of the universe. In the darkness. Yeah. Yeah. And I when I'm there, and then it's like it's as if like a black hole is pulling everything in, and whatever is pulling in, I don't know. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But that's when I'm getting my medicine. That's when it's working. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And let's say a five minute sit down i might only get in it for like a minute yeah 45 seconds but that's enough you know what i'm saying the longer i the longer i sit the more i'll get in in it you know what i'm saying yeah so you know i did a lot of research on meditation and um yoga is actually meditation right we use it for exercise because it works for that too but um when the yogis used to go into or the monks will go into meditation and i understand it because like i had to be before i had to be in fucking silence to meditate any sound, I'm like out of it, right? Yeah. Then it got to where I can be around people and meditate. Yeah. I could be in noisy places and meditate. So what they would do, they would keep escalating that to where, oh, fuck it, let's go in the cold and meditate. Let's put ourselves in weird, uncomfortable like positions. Like as challenging as possible. Right, and still get into that center. That space. Right, and that's incredible. I ain't nowhere near that, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But like maybe one day when I'm older and ain't got shit to do, <laughs> yeah. I'll go on some monk shit, yeah. you know what I'm saying? That sounds fun, dude. It does, bro. I'm going to lie, oh. it sounds really fun. I just got shit to do, though. Yeah, I got a lot to do. You know what I'm saying? All right, guys, so our next partner is Athletic Greens, a product that I use all the time. And to be honest, like, I've used Greens products for shit the last, like, I want to say 10 years. So these are definitely products that I really, really believe in, I really stand behind. Um, this one's super nice packaging. And I think right now, Athletic Greens is making it super, super easy um, and they're giving you one year supply of immune supporting vitamin D, which you guys should know is super, super important as far as like overall health, well being, sleep, muscle building, everything. Free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash enjoy. Again, that's athleticgreens.com slash enjoy to take ownership of your health, pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. This stuff's amazing. Again, I, I would tell you guys straight up, like if you do not take a greens product every day, I guarantee you're probably not eating enough greens. So something like this is really gonna benefit you. So give it a shot. Again, that's athleticgreens.com slash enjoy. And uh, let's get back to the podcast. Um, I get a lot of my, be like- How do you, how do you meditate? Okay, so normally I'll do in the sauna. And mm -hmm. ironically enough, you mentioned one, the uh, like the cold tub. Mm -hmm. I'll try, I mean, it, almost like you're forced to meditate in a cold tub. That's like, the only way I can get in there, get in there is if I meditate. You, you have to, otherwise yeah. like you're like. <sighs> Cause the pain don't bother me when I meditate. Yeah, well everything yeah. disappears. So, but mm -hmm. typically if I'm not in the sauna or I'm not doing that, I mean, I literally, I have like a, a heat mat, like mm -hmm. an infrared heat mat and I'll just sit on it. I'll let yeah. it heat up. I'll like stretch for a little bit to mm -hmm. relax myself. Mm -hmm. And like exactly, kind of exactly how you said, as far as the thoughts and yeah. blowing them out. I, I, I've learned and I've taught myself to, no matter what comes to my mind, like not fight it. Mm -hmm. Because my, one of my biggest issues in my life in general is, is trying to control like my thoughts or control my direction or control the things in my life. And, it, and it's kind of been one of my really biggest blessings, but also can be one of my biggest curses. So 
when thoughts come in, I try not to like dissect them. I just go, mm -hmm. it just, I try and remind myself it is what it is right? and let it continue to go. Don't hold on to it. Don't try to like organize it. Just let it come in. And however long it stays, I let it stay until like, like you said, I'm focusing on my breathing, mm -hmm. but my mind, cause I don't know if you can relate to this or not, but like I'll get thoughts like just on almost like multiple different levels at the same time. Like this will be going on. This will be going on. Yeah. I can think about someone, some set earlier at the same time, but I kind of let it all come and go as, as it pleases. Mm -hmm. And like you said, I only focus on my breathing and I just keep focusing on that. Cause like yeah. my thoughts will, if I don't, I'll go back to that like topic and I'll try to dissect it. Yeah. And a lot of times it like, it doesn't allow me to fully relax to get right. to that point where I'm like, okay, Th this is this is what I came here for. Mm -hmm. And another thing that I realized meditating, I don't know, something with heat, dude. There's something with heat that has really like, I'm looking back now, it's like all the times I've done like, cause I've done Epsom salt baths for years. Yeah. And it originally just started cause I was just trying to like feel, you know, better, feel from, better. From, hard, from hard workouts. Cause yeah. I'm like, oh, these, I need to get these aches and pains out. Right. And then I realized I'm taking all these baths like two, three times a week. And every time I swear to God, every time I take these baths, as soon as I get out of the bathroom, I'm like, oh, this is a great idea. This, mm -hmm. is, the, this is the solution to this problem. Mm -hmm. And I'll write it down and I'll yeah. have like the perfect like content ideas or like, you know, oh, I, I got to have this conversation and I could sort it out like this. And it was always after that. So I think there's something to heat because in the sauna, I, I like, you know, hours after I get really good ideas. Mm -hmm. The bathtub, I get really good ideas. Um, there's definitely something to heat, man. I don't know. Have you ever experienced mm -hmm. anything like that? All the time, bro. I do a sauna every, every morning. So I can definitely relate with the good ideas or just good, com we have good conversations in Asana. It's yeah. great, I love it. And, um, but I start like, when it start getting uncomfortable, that's when the work starts for me. Yeah. Like, oh shit, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I won't, I don't do infrared saunas cause I want the stress from the heat, you know? Um, I've done them here and there if that's all I can get to, but I gotta sit in there too long, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but like the sauna where we're, we go, it'd be like 180, 190. That shit is vicious, bro. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, that's amazing. That's the best. Yeah. But um, but nah, but I think what it is is the sauna, it may feel like it's an easy place to meditate because shit, you need to chill the fuck out. You know what yeah. I'm saying? But um, but I think that uh being for me was difficult is meditating when, you know, some downtime or not even downtime, just taking time out my day to sit and meditate. That's when it's it's more work for me because it's harder to do that because I want to be doing shit. Yeah. Like my mind never stops. Yeah. That's why, I, you know, I, I have tr problems sleeping sometimes because my mind don't shut off. You know yeah. what I mean? So for me to go and sit and take some time out to meditate, that's work for me. And that's good. Anything difficult for me is good for me. Yeah. Well, I, I think I, that's I for everyone. That. Yeah. I just think people, people are more apt to like avoiding mm -hmm. the hard shit because it's easier to avoid the hard mm -hmm. shit. I mean, that's like anything we talk about, like, trying to become a better person in any respect is like, it's, it's 99% of the time. It's not about someone else or something that happened to you. It's about how you're, like you said, your perception, like we talked about earlier of it right. and looking in the word of yourself and being like, okay, where am I in this? And like, right. what, how did I get here? Cause like, I think something like it's, it's really common nowadays is like people, I don't know, taking responsibility for, for where they are. Cause a lot of people will just be like, Oh, this happened to me because of this. Oh, this mm -hmm. happened to me because of that. And it's like, okay, like at, at what point do you swallow the pill and you're like, okay, I'm here because of me. Mm -hmm. And how do I fix this? Or how do I look into myself and like be willing to say, okay, these things, this place I'm at in my life, I'm not comfortable. Why am I not comfortable? How did I find myself here? What steps did I take to get here? What steps do I take to get out of here? And I think people are afraid to do that because it's much easier to be like, oh, it's that person and that person did it to me. Etc. And I just think it's it's a it's a terrible place to be. Have you ever been in any places in your life where you felt like it was someone else and not you, nah. relationship wise? But nah, bro. Just, some people are just different. Always on me. Yeah. Any shortcoming that I have is my fault. Yeah. I'll never blame not, nothing of my shit on somebody else. Right. It's always. It could be like I had a situation <laughs> recently where like a million dollars of mine got taken out of my account. Right to this other institution and they gave me the hardest time retrieving this money. But it was my fault. I was moving fast, not paying attention to shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It was really, it felt really dis disrespectful and egregious and the people on the phone was like rude. You know what I'm saying? And mean. Yeah. But it was my fault. You know what I'm saying? It don't matter. Like 
whenever we're in a diseased situation, and disease mean dis and ease, the, the absence of ease. Uncomfortable, it's yeah. Our, we put ourselves in that spot. You know what I'm saying? Unless you're born into a fucked up situation, which that sucks. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I think that life is fair generally speaking right there are some weird situations that happen um but i think for the most part life is fair but back to the meditation i have another i guess it is a meditation but it's a sacrifice and i fast every wednesday so right? about sacrifices yeah fast because sacrificing food <laughs> i know i'm fucking with you yeah <laughs> so every wednesday i fast of course for autophagy and the whole day yeah 24 okay. hours yeah. it's not that bad of course, for all of the physiological reasons and to be healthy, but I have an intention in going into it of being receptive to to communication. And I'll tell you what I mean. Like, I try to communicate well, properly, effectively, right? right? I'm not a fan of people that talk a lot and don't, don't say anything. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm Like, what are you yeah. saying? You right. know what I'm saying? So, or even books. Like, I read a lot of books and then I got to a point where I'm like, this is stupid. Like, this 400 page book is only 20 pages of information in it. Yeah, well, Give the, me a 20 page book, I'm all right with that. Yeah, I just want the meat. They wanted to hit the quota. I don't want that <laughs> yeah, shit, yeah. like we don't want that shit. It's a yeah. waste of time. So I want efficiency in life, right? So unless it's music, then I want to enjoy that. You know what I mean? Sex, I want to enjoy that. Certain yeah. things you want to enjoy, you know what I'm saying? But most things, I just want the what the purpose is, you know what yeah. I mean? So even with me, so communication is always something that I'm trying to work on. But I have grown to understand that there is communication and thoughts that we have that can't be quantified by words. I mean- You're talking about like body language and things like that? That's part of it. Yeah. But there's thoughts, there's things on our heart that there's no words for, you know what I'm saying? Like I did two IQ tests, right? Just out of curiosity. And the most recent one, there was a section where there's shapes, right? They all look the same when you just glance at it, but some of them might be different, but they're oriented in different pla different ways. So it's always timed by proxy. So you have to determine if these are the same shapes or not, right? Okay. There's no talking to think, to figure these things out. It's just thoughts, you know what I'm saying? So thoughts and language is not, they don't go hand in hand, what I'm saying. Just like a baby who doesn't l know how to speak yet, they think many things. They figure shit out without any language. I think it's more about feeling, right? Whatever it is. It's about thoughts, right? That's on our heart and our, our brain. That it could even be something that we want to communicate to each other. You ever been in a situation you're trying to explain something to somebody? You just can't nail it? Yeah. Right? Or you could be in a different country. They have literally different languages. Yeah, they don't even understand. Different this, words. But they get it. Different words. You know what I'm saying? So you probably can't even properly articulate what you really want to say because y'all don't have a word for this and they do or vice versa you know yeah. what i'm saying so i i've come to understand that language is an inferior uh method of communication right so i want to have better communication whether and i want to be receptive to what people are trying to really say right because we were talking earlier about certain things how some people might say things with their mouth but that's not what they mean you know yeah. what I'm saying? And it's not, it's, it's, I guess we would call it a lie, but even that is uh, a misrepresentation of what they're doing. They just don't know how to say what they're, they want to say. Right. And they might, wanna, they might say something that they think we want to hear. So they're agreeing to something that they don't want to do, right? Yeah. But it's what we want, or they feel it's what we well, this want. Well, is, this is not even just talking directly about like words in a sense. It's just talking about almost understanding of self where and you're at. others, yeah, right. Of course, myself, but I want to be receptive and and to understand what people are really trying to say to me. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Because I'm such a robotic person with certain things. Well, we, you said this, so that's I, it. I relate to you, and that shit ain't cool. Yeah, you know I relate saying? to you heavily. So I've dealt with. I just dealt with that. I was telling you earlier. I didn't go too into detail, but that's something that I dealt with. And I had to sit back, like, damn, this person wasn't saying that. They were saying this. Yeah. And I wasn't hearing it. You know what I mean? So I don't ever want to make those mistakes again. So I've been working at being more receptive to understanding what people are really trying to say. Yeah. So what, what sort of practices do you do? So if you're in a conversation with someone, are you asking more qualifying questions when people are giving yeah. you information? Yeah, I'll ask questions. You know, I'll try to, you know, people, 
I'm a lot, you know, so I ask a lot of questions. I always do that because look, I guess when I was a kid, my mother, my mother, I was like valedictorian. Victorian. I was like a straight A student. My really? Mother, yeah. I was my, so bad at school. I was good. Fuck. My mother, I was afraid of my mom. She was like, I don't care how late you are after class. Don't leave that class unless you understand what your teacher was talking about. So ask questions. So I always ask questions. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I guess I've always been on that trajectory to really understand because look, you talk like I tell my son, like, yo, speak up, be emphatic with what you say. Don't waste your time talking if they can't hear you or understand what you're saying. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And uh, that's just try to that's how I try to live my life. I want to be effective with what I'm saying. Yeah. What I'm trying to communicate. Yeah, I think yeah. communication is the most fucking important part almost just in, in life in yeah. general. Yeah. Like trying to get better at your own, you know, your own voice. And it's interesting because it's not just like your voice, but like you, like we were talking about earlier, it's there's so many other things like the vibe, the energy. Like is you, you ever meet someone you're like, you know right away, like this is there's a weird thing here without yeah. any words said. Yeah. Um, I think a lot of people aren't aren't really even aware of that. But it's something to look into it's something to think about um i i i don't know i guess it's like we're we've never really been taught this kind of stuff unless you like go search it out for yourself Correct. you're just kind of taught this from like there's no curriculum for i guess spirituality and when i say spirituality i mean one being at one with every aspect of himself right you know what i'm saying mind body nature technology whatever understanding and just getting you you like cars right yeah i love cars i love not, cars not as much as the next guy but i love cars and i love driving right and i'll be telling my friends like yo when like going through the hills or whatever late at night music the vibe i feel like i'm me and my car is one yeah yeah like it's me just you know what i'm saying <laughs> these so, guys back here for sure feel that that's what's up baby yeah so probably, probably like how people who ride horses feel you know what i'm saying yeah like i feel like one with the car like i like i i think and you know, who I am as a person and my trajectory of, you know, of my own singularity. Like, I love the things that I love that much. You know what I'm saying? So even people I love, I'm like, yo, we're the same. We're together. We're connected, right? And I'm, I'm, I'm bringing this up back. I'm going to go back to the, com the communication part. So I was in a situation where it was someone I really fucking loved, right? I couldn't communicate properly. That's where you're going with it. I had it all right here. And what I had would have been suffice if had I communicated it properly. But I'm jumping over the hurdles of my ego. I'm trying to navigate this person's ego. Yeah. My feelings, like everything, right? This so, is a woman, I'm assuming. Yeah, yeah, yeah okay. of course. Because this is the only thing, like when yeah, I'm thinking yeah, about I'm like, sure. fuck, I relate sure. to that. Her name is Evelyn. Okay. And, you know, and I had it all right here. But I had not, I was such a baby and my communication you know yeah i just couldn't do it and i would be so frustrated like i don't know what to say i guess it's a wrap or you know that feeling saying? if like if i just said this no i never even got to that because yeah. it that would have been easy you know what i'm saying i wrote her letters beautifully articulated but it wasn't it it still wasn't it you yeah. know what i mean and that it i could not it's not a letter i have to be in your presence you know what i mean yeah you have to feel me. You have to feel my energy. My energy is strong. But like I said earlier, energy is not good or bad. It's wherever it's being articulated. You know what I'm saying? So when it's articulated with the the seasons of ego, emotions, yada, yada, it's not going to be good. It's not going to feel good. It's going to feel heavy and pressure. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And it pushes people away. There's a movie, an old kung fu movie called White Lotus from back in the day. And this style is like just f flow free. And if somebody try to punch you hard, the force of their fist, it pushes you away. It's just, your power is its defense. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I get it. And I felt like, fuck, I'm pushing her away with all this passion and this, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I and I couldn't, I could not tap into communicating what was in my heart. Yeah. You know I, 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 mean? I, I think what happens is a lot of times like, you might have exactly what's in your heart. I could speak this from my own perspective as well and my own experiences. I have like what I want to say. I have how I want to say it and I could even say it. But sometimes this is the thing that I think people fail to understand when it comes to relationships, relationship building or sustaining, et cetera, is that the other party is not ready for that yet or they're That's not ready for the way too. that you have to say it or maybe there's things that are they've, they've like 
built up defenses in their mind based around you based on your past and like they haven't let those things down yet in order for you to come in and, and even make that effective change or that proper communication and that's that's one of the hardest things when it comes to like i would say intimate relationships in general and even for me and my and myself is like i know that timing can you know could be so unique for everyone that like no matter how much i feel or how much i want it to be a certain way or how much i've wanted certain relationships to end up or be a certain way it's almost just like you you miss that timing you miss like being able to get that com, com, complete uh communication to someone in the way that they're able to actually receive it because that's one thing that's so changing with everyone because like mm -hmm. you learn new things every day someone else learns new things every day like you go have a conversation could could hit someone differently than you know two three four five months ago a week ago right. days ago and i think it's really important for people to understand like in in a lot of communication you have to be aware not only of like what you feel and what you want to say and how you want to deliver and what you want how you want to come across but also like where is that person in their life are they willing and ready to receive it yet because mm -hmm. you might try and have a conversation with someone who's like you don't know where they're at yet I, and i think this is important in a practice of communication is before you start to divulge where you're at, what you want, understand them where they understand are. them first. That's exactly. Real. And and you know, there was a lot of things that in my communication that I was trying to navigate as well that I didn't mention, like your influences. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, yo, this is not a good source of information over here. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. This is not someone doing better than you. You know what I mean? So I'm thinking all of these things when I'm trying to communicate, but a superior man with and i'm saying superior in in terms of like the general public right not like inherently better than people but someone it's okay to be superior if you've qualified yourself to be superior someone who's done others. the work someone who's done the work yeah should be able to properly articulate what they need to regardless of these hurdles and yeah. these obstacles and that's what that's why i'm fasting you know what i mean yeah so i'm sacrificing the comfort of food when i want it on Wednesdays with my intent on being better at communicating. You still train on Wednesdays? Yeah. Okay, of course, mm -hmm. of course. But see, I, I eat once a day, I eat in the evening and I, I train in the morning. That's never been a problem for me. Yeah. I, I don't, like if I eat and drain, I don't have a lot of energy for some reason. Yeah. Yeah. I've always trained fasted too. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. It's better. I, I think I tell you, I think I know why. If you think about our ancestors, right? When they were hunting and gathering. Right? Yeah, of course. They, they didn't go and hunt on a full stomach. No. They chilled on the field something. They, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. A couple of days go by with no food. Like, all right, it's time to go find food. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And they were effective at it. But I read about this, but uh, we have a heightened sense of awareness and alertness on an empty stomach. Our brains work better. Memory works better. So the brain literally works better when we're fasted. Yeah. Because it has to. I yeah. mean, think about it. When we eat, when I eat, I'm going to kick my feet up. Oh, yeah. You want, I want to take a nap, go yeah. to sleep. You don't, there's no, like, full mind state is a hungry mind state you know what yeah, I'm saying? absolutely are we full baby let's go get it like nah what um what other like i guess cause, you know we're talking about fasting now what other um and you've dealt with i don't know how much i could say about this you've dealt with some health issues in the past right nah. some stuff no no nah, like what but nah i mean when i was like 250 I remember getting my, this is when I was living in Miami. I yeah. was the biggest, I was swole, no fat. Either. You were 250? 250, bro. How much are you? I'm 250 right now, but I'm a okay. little taller. Okay, yeah. I was like, I got my blood work done for the first time. It wasn't the worst, but it wasn't good. You know what yeah. I'm saying? I was trending towards being pre-diabetic. Right. So really? Like, yeah, bro. What bro, the fuck? Heavy is heavy. Our organs don't give a fuck. Yeah. And I was eating a lot. I was eating a lot. That Miami food, bro. God yeah. damn. Oh, bro, bomb. especially, I don't know if it was there when that, when that whole situation gym was there, Yeah. but have you been to Cafe Bistro? The Cuban spot? Yeah. It's like, they have crazy like drinks With and food. Soda, and, I mean, uh, the coffee, the them Cuban. I think they have food. all kinds of crazy food, but was it's right down the street. Spot? Was it a breakfast spot? It, yes. It's a yeah, very popular so, spot. It's so. a, it's a, anyway, it's a side what note. Was, T, what was the name of that spot we used to go to all the time? Me and Joey was all there, there every, fuck, it was like a guy's name, but man, we, I'm there. But the food's amazing in Miami. Incredible. Yeah. Incredible. Yeah. And, huh? Nah, fuck, man. <laughs> that's Europe. That's London. Yeah. What are you talking about? But nah, it was a Cuban food spot. But anyway. Yeah. But nah, I was, yeah, I don't, refresh me. I don't know. Maybe I had some. I can't think I, of. I thought I had saw some stuff, but, but anyways. What the, was it? What do you think? I don't know. Something about blood pressure shit. So maybe someone's just talking shit about you on the internet. I've never even seen that. Like, doesn't nah. matter. But point is. But, but I never had that issue. No issues. Yeah. Nah. So. 
what have you done over the years to stay healthy? Like All supplement right. wise? So I think, I think at that period, me making a drastic change in my nutrition helped a lot. So then that's when I went to my intermittent fasting and my form is one meal a day, right? Okay. I used to do that a long time ago too. So that, I went to that and then for a minute, uh, I went from to like every other day, no, no animal protein, you know what I'm saying? And then I seen that was easy, so I started, I went, I ate a vegan diet, right? And I did that for like two, three years, you know what I mean? Really, I tried it for yeah. two months and I couldn't do couldn't it. Couldn't do it, yeah. Fuck it was so I hard. couldn't do it here in Cali. When I moved back to Cali, I couldn't do it, but I found though it wasn't necessary, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I would just eat my meat with moderation, don't overdo it, but that all of that period, me just ad adjusting my nutrition was the best thing for me. You know, I felt like it started reversing aging, like fucking better. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. every sleep, okay. I still, I have a hard time going to bed. Just like me. But when I go yeah. to bed, when I'm asleep, I'm good. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But um, but yeah, the things that matter got better. Yeah. You know what I mean? Are there any specific supplements because that you know that you take consistently? Yeah, I take uh, a product called Nectar. It's right. from my line Ambrosia. It's yeah. just an organ support. It's delicious. So it don't taste like a supplement, but it's like heart, lungs, uh, kidneys, liver. It, 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 it helps everything, you know what I'm saying? I take a lot of supplements. Not everything I take every day though, but Nectar is one I take every day. Mental Jewels I take every day, and that's a nootropic, you yeah. know? Um, but I take my protein every day. My planta is a vegan protein. I also found that, well, we came, we formulated a, the, the number one plant-based protein in the country, right? But because it tastes so good and pound for pound, is, it, it can hang with any whey protein in terms of effectiveness, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. A complete amino profile and things of that nature. So, you know, that I do every day. I supplement that because I don't eat a lot, you know what I'm saying? So I'll have that with my meals or after a workout or something like that. So, but yeah, but th those are the ones that I take. But here's the thing, I sell supplements, but I tell people all the time, you don't need supplements. Yeah. You need uh, a disciplined lifestyle. You know what I mean? Absolutely. And you need to like, the younger you are is when you should start adopting that. Because I was a trainer before in the gym and I would get people that the doctor was making them come get a trainer. It's never too late, but it's kind of too late. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a habit for me. If you can get yeah. yourself in a position where like you're younger developing these habits, mm -hmm. the, it's much, much easier to maintain. It's much right. easier to keep going. Right. Instead of trying to get back into something, it's, it's 10 times harder. I mean, that's just, yeah. that's how habits work. Mm -hmm. um, so as far as like uh, supplements, obviously you have the line, everything you do. Before you had the line, did you, because I've always been the kind of individual that's like, I'm like researching ingredients and then like, buying these powders and like bowls. That's what and, I used to do, so yeah. yeah. That's how I started my first company. Yeah. yeah. So I, I remember like all, like that's literally a um, shit, a, a buddy of mine, Brandon, I mentioned a few times on the podcast, he uh, he actually beat ulcerative colitis. Like his doctor was like, you gotta take prednisone and all this stuff. And he's like, nah, fuck that. And he like, he literally reversed this, mm -hmm. this, I think it's a, not a virus, it's a, it's a, what, what's a- It's an autoimmune disease. Autoimmune disease. disease. It's an mm -hmm. autoimmune disease that like you're supposed to, if you have it, you have it forever. Mm -hmm. And he has no traces of it. Mm -hmm. So anyways, me and him back in the day, this was, this must've been like fucking, dude, like even before Instagram almost like, <laughs> fuck. I was, must've been 20, 21 years old. We started a supplement company, mm -hmm. completely flopped. Um, but it was, it was like, Prior to that and during that, we were just ordering bulk powders and we were like, oh, these are like, these are the cool ingredients at right, the time. Right. And, um, I guess the reason why I'm saying this is, has, how has the supplement industry changed in your eyes? You're in it, um, you've seen it for a long time, obviously me as well, I answered this too, but how has it changed over the years for the better, but then also for the worse? I think it's been more positive than negative yeah. because it's a lot of brands now, so it's very saturated, so it's harder for people to come up. So it is only survival of the fit, the cream rises. Right. And also better in a sense that, like one of my partners, Mark, he's one of those guys that will go and do some independent testing on somebody's shit that he feel may be uh, fugazi and they're not meeting their label claims and expose them, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's been a lot of that, so people are more apt to do the right thing now. Yeah, they're held to a different standard. Yeah, so right. so that's a good thing. There's still a lot of shitty products out Bro, there. Bro, back in the day, it used to be just like, 
And I interrupt just, you. I apologize. Yeah, just like just me. bullshit. Just like straight me. up, like proprietary the, the, blends. The, the, like the label, like just trust us. Yeah, it's there. like yo, yeah. it's yeah. <laughs> Sources, trust me, bro. Right, right, right. Like right, right. straight up, like just the best shit. Yeah, the just buy this. Right. It's 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 crazy though. Yeah, man. it's crazy how like it was like that, and then I forget what company came along, and then there was like all the stuff was just like everything started to had to be transparent. Otherwise, like if mm-hmm. it wasn't transparent, like meaning you can't trust it. You don't yeah, fuck with it. not proprietary blends. So before guys, just so you don't know, like proprietary blends would be like there'd be these 10 ingredients. And like the first one was the one that was the highest dose in that product. But oftentimes they could put these words for the ingredients that were like, that you wanted in a product, but you could water down the whole thing just yeah. to say it wasn't the product. Right. So that'd be a proprietary blends. Now it's like transparent as far as like, this is a hundred milligrams or a thousand milligrams of this. And, and that definitely is a big benefit to the industry and I people's agree. fucking pockets. Yeah. Um, but then recently, like, I don't know the last two years, you seen like the, you know, the, I guess this has always been a thing to be honest where they're like, you know, the plant extracts, like a natural steroid, like yeah. this kind of shit that you see on the internet. You're like, dog. I'm going to say this when people were making, but there's some, there's some good products out there. There are, there's some good products. But when you see this shit in the magazines, if you like Anabar, you'll love, God. you know, Enovar, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It ain't, it ain't it. Like if, listen, I don't think steroids or hormones is bad. Yeah. Right. But I think that if people are going to choose to do it, go through an endocrinologist, go through a real doctor, yeah. you know what I'm saying, do it the right way. I've done it, and I did it under the table shit, shady shit, you know what I'm saying? Luckily, I never fucked myself up, yeah. but you know, I'm lucky, right? But I'm not doing it any, I haven't done it since 2017, um, and I won't do it again until I'm old and really need it, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Because I don't wanna abuse it, and I know too many people, man, that I'm like, yo, are you addicted? They be like, yeah, like psychologically, you know what I'm saying? Right. They say, I'll never get off. I'm like, damn, I don't want to ever have to be, have to be connected to a plug in the wall. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And listen, like, honestly, like, I'm still strong. I ain't the strongest, but I'm still strong as shit. Yeah. I, I still look good. So it is what it is. So when I need it, I'm going to use it. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So I say, like, if you really want to go to that next level, whatever the fuck, do it the right way, cause you can. You ain't gotta be worried about shit. You get your blood blood levels checked. You should, because look, everybody even before you start. By the way, even before you guys. start, because yeah. you might not need it. People have their your fucking your your crypto wallets, your bank account apps on your phone. That shit's important. Yeah. But when you get blood work, they send you the PDF. You have it on your phone. Yeah. Right. That's more important than all Ten of that shit. Ten times more important. You know what I'm saying? So y'all gotta think about that, like. Y'all should be getting y'all blood work done regardless. I was going to say, even regardless of steroids, no steroids, I think you should know what the fuck's going on with your body, 100%. period. That's one of the most important things, and I think it's not even talked about enough. Regardless of taking steroids or not, is like you should just go get your blood work done at least every six months, at least every year at the very yeah, least. I, once a year, I think, but for us, like I do it twice a year, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Because one time I had to go to the hospital, bro, because my body just seized up on me, like just cramps everywhere. It was the worst pain ever. And I had like beginning symptom, symptoms of rhabdo, rhabdomyosis or some shit. Yeah. And it's, a, it's usually a condition that like CrossFitters or like marathon or ultra marathon runners get. It's just a constant breakdown of lactic acid. Which is so, this is so kidneys. funny because it just reminds me of your shit back in the day over training. Right, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but see, look, that was That's fine. So but what happened was I did it on a day I was shooting for Muscle and, Muscle and Fitness Magazine, had two shoots that day. And one of the homies had a shoot that day too for them. And I, shot, I did it with him. So I went a whole day without eating shit, without drinking shit, going hard. And my body was like, fuck you, bro. <laughs> you know yeah. what I'm saying? So that, and that's just too much lactic acid being passed through your kidneys. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So y'all, you, you know, if you train hard, you gotta go get your shit checked because you could be not be eating, taking anything and still get some adverse effects to your liver. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Or your kidneys. Or just like not knowing With that too like- Too much protein. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Or not knowing your, your vitamin D is low or right. like these your your electrolytes are off because you're not drinking enough water. Like there's so much you can know from just looking. Yeah. Um, and I think a lot of people get afraid to look because they don't want to know they something's are. wrong with them. But you like what you said about your boy, I think his name is- Brandon. Brandon. Yeah. Listen- Brandon Gertis, bro. For most sure, things can be reversed. Yeah. Diabetes, type two can be- Look, cancers, certain cancers can be reversed. There's a there's a doctor I'm really fond of. His name is Dr. Jason Fung. I believe he's in Canada, but he he reverses his patients' diabetes, cancer by with adjusting their nutrition, their diet, go, putting them on mostly plant-based for a while and having them fast periodically. Yeah. You know what I mean? 
Fasting cures a lot of shit. Fasting's the best shit in the world. It's bro. the best. I've shit. been doing it. You know, crazy. Mm. I've been doing it before. It was ever really a thing. I just did mm. it naturally, like yeah. through school. And then I remember. Do you remember? You you would you would remember this? Um, lean gains. Do you remember that? Like Sounds the, the, the first the first. It was like must have been the first guy on the internet um, who talked about fasting. Mm. This guy probably anyone listening to this. If you're any relevant now, you probably don't know who the fuck I'm talking about. But there was this guy. <laughs> And I remember reading about this and I was like, oh, fasting's a thing? Because mm-hmm. I just did it naturally. Right. And then I learned about it through this guy. And then I yeah. remember doing more of my own research and be like, wait, this is actually a really beneficial thing for your right. mind, for your body. Yeah. But fasting is like, I did it unintentionally damn near my whole life. Right. Even while training heavy, all yeah. this bullshit. I yeah. think it's one of the most effective tools. I agree. And why did you do it so much? Why, I just, I don't, I, mm-hmm. you know, why did I do it when I first started? Yeah. I didn't. That was just how I was. Like right. I was never hungry when I woke up. I was only right. hungry after activity. So mm-hmm. my whole day would go by, and until I like did something physically active, I wasn't That's hungry. A perfect time to eat. Like yeah, it, it makes no sense to eat before that. You haven't earned it. Yeah, you know what I mean. That's how I see it. See, my thing was like my ego back in the day. Like I don't need that shit. Y'all go ahead, go ahead, yeah, starving. Go ahead. I'm gonna work out empty. You know what I'm saying? That's why. Or I'm gonna sit in the sauna, no water, dehydrated. Well, you know that's that. <laughs> I do it though. Yo, a, it yo, ain't, it ain't the do you worst still thing. do that? Yeah. Oh, you're funny. Yeah. If I take water with me, I, I I I literally turn into a pussy in there. I can't handle it. You know what I'm saying? What the what? It's just something weird that like I go in there with nothing. I'm good. I ride that shit out. I never tell the guys, all right, let's go. If if I don't have water, but if I have water, I'd be like, all right, y'all ready? Really? Yeah, what bro, the fuck? Weird. No, no. Wait, wait. Weird. I'm trying to understand where that comes from, though. But the water's not making you a pussy. It does. No. In the sauna, <laughs> oh, no, no. Water makes me a pussy. In the no, sauna. bro. That's so fucking know. funny to me. It's my weird brain, stupid brain. Yeah, I think you but just you, like the challenge. It's the challenge. Guy. Yeah, but I got so used to it. Yeah. Maybe it's a, the um, the ritual of not taking water. I'm, you know, I, I think it's a ritual things, of you, the challenge. Certain things rituals people got to keep intact you know what i'm saying yeah when they're performing it's a little something. ocd yeah it is it's all good it's all good you know what i mean but brad wh- i got a question for you a couple yeah, questions yeah. what do you do for fun because <laughs> hold on let me let me because he don't ever say this shit i know he don't say this shit to y'all but bradley rich as fuck yeah he popping you know what i'm saying what do you do for fun dude to be honest successful man successful guy got a lot not just successful because there's a lot of people that are successful and nobody knows who they are yeah. You know what I'm just successful and popular to their family. I like, everybody know you. I uh bro, I just I'd like to work, man. Mm-hmm. I'm so I don't know if it's a sense of like uh, there's not enough time or like it's maybe it's related to my fear of death. I just feel like if I'm not doing something like in in that lane for for like growing, for moving forward, I'm not having fun. Mm-hmm. And it's it's kind of fucked up because cuz sometimes you know I mean, I feel like I have a hard time 100% like appreciating where I'm at because mm-hmm. I'm so grateful, but sometimes I don't take time to slow down to, to, to be tr- genuinely grateful for it. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, how I got everything that I have has been through me doing what I love. And that's why I think I, I'm so like enamored with work and why I like work so much is because, dude, when I started social media and, and much like yourself, I, I don't know if you knew this, but I knew this very clearly. I didn't know that I was going to do this now. Like there wasn't social media influence. I was like, oh, I'm going to do fitness. And yeah, I didn't I'm know gonna, that. Yeah, that we, wasn't a thing. That wasn't a thing. So when mm-hmm. we started, it was like, pure. I'm doing this. Yes, pure yeah. because I love this. Mm-hmm. And, and I started posting about it. I didn't know that I was, you know, was going to be able to make brands and make money and do brand deals and have all the shit that I have now. Mm-hmm. I thought like, yo, I'm just posting stuff that I'm genuinely passionate about. So I think because of the way that I started it and the way that it grew, Mm -hmm. it was based off of like genuine like love and what I did. Mm -hmm. And that's why I love the work so much. Now, it's interesting that you asked me this question because at the same time, I have had moments where um, I almost fell out of love with the gym, with training, with Mm -hmm. social media, with making content. because of you know things that I was dealing with in the in my past and drama and this and that, but yeah, for the most part, man, like I I just love working. I love doing this. Like mm. this is the mo- even like this is work to me because yeah. I get to shoot content. We talk and we share right. this. And it's on iTunes or whatever the fuck. But like 
genuinely, man, like this is enjoyable to me. Like having this conversation with you, someone that I've known for years and mm. we until today haven't recently connected right. for years. Right. And having this conversation with you and kind of seeing you here and there on the internet mm. and watching like you move and what you've been doing. Yeah. I enjoy the fuck out of this. Like right. this genuinely is the most enjoyable thing to me. Right, right. So same. Yeah. So like yeah, it's tough for me to back away from work because mm. I, I love it so much. Like and I would say more so this type of content that I I mean, I've evolved into this, obviously, over the years, you know, lifting the girls, all the crazy shit, the workout mm -hmm. videos. I still love doing that kind of stuff, but, like, it's not as fulfilling as it once was. Right. This, though, is the most fulfilling thing. Yeah. And I, I don't think this will ever really change. Because it's sustainable. Yeah, you know? and, it's, and it's just, like... And it's your building. I, like, I can't lie, bro. Over the past month, past 30, maybe two months, I've been having the dopest experiences with my podcast. Because yeah. it's a lot of people I, I'm just meeting for the first time. I know who they are, but we don't know each other. But we sit down and have the best fucking dialogue. You know yeah. what I mean? And I'm learning from them too. You know, and we become friends. Um, what do you have in your hand there, Brad? I'll have some skincare stuff right here. Yeah, girls and, like nice skin for sure. Well, apparently this company, Tiege Hanley, makes it real simple. Uh, to have nice skin. I am actually kind of new to this thing. Yeah, I'm new you to need the, to take care of your skin. It's I'm very not going to lie. I'm new to the skincare routine. I'm new to the skincare game. But, I mean, I will say this. This does look very simple to use. Um, I know it's like step by step. They even got like a nice little towel. This is... This is a nice little... This is a nice little addition. I'm not yeah, you need a face Does this cloth. come with every every time that I order it? Probably not, huh? I don't know. I can't know. make I those kind of so. claims. But, like, you need a specific cloth for your face. You don't use the one you use for your body for your face because it, it's damaging to your skin. So. Oh, because I use the same. I yeah, use, that's okay. kind of gross. Brad. Anyways, um, shout out to T. Shanley Skincare directly for men. Obviously, like, you know, maybe not the most common thing you're like you and your boys talk about, but like it's important. Like she said, women like nice skin. And I'm not going to lie. As I'm getting older, I'm like, yo, what do I do to preserve my skin? In skincare, I know it's very important, especially like this. They got they have this this uh, AM thing, which is, looks like it's for uh SPF like it has a sunscreen in it which I know for sure something that ages you faster than anything is like kind of like in wrinkles and stuff in your eyes is like around here is the sun and if you're a gym bro such as myself then you know how important the sun is because you also need to tan so you look you know you look fucking juicy and because Tej Hanley is sponsoring today's episode they're offering a great deal just go to tej.com slash raw talk get 30% off your first box plus a free gift do they get all this Free what, gift. I don't know if that's this a gift, gift, but maybe. Maybe that towel's a part of it. Well, listen, I'm telling you, if the towel's a part of it, I'm actually, I'm impressed. Because this towel, this is, this is a nice towel. Yeah. This is a solid towel right here. This is, this is a face towel right here. This is a yeah. new thing I'm learning. Girls are telling me, I'm not kidding, girls are telling me in my life, like, yo, you gotta be, you know what's another thing I learned about your face? I'm gonna tell you, no, this is genuine <laughs> shit right here. Listen, nothing I learned about your face, shout out to Janley. By the way, check out their website, is that when you rub your face, and I swear, this is like actually crazy. I, I just have to tell you this. When you rub your face and you, you're showering, you rub your face, rub your face. I notice this personally. The harder I am on my face, the more I have like bags under my eyes. So if I like, you know, I learned that like these fingers right here, this, this one and this one are like the softest fingers. So this is a true story. And so when I rub my face, I always rub like this. It sounds super lame. Make fun of me. I don't give a fuck. Okay. But I do this and I'm telling you, it's been like three months. My face looks nicer. Yeah. People your are like, oh, you look younger. Finger and your pinky. So in combination with the soft pinker fing pinker fing finger pinky these two things together these appendages <laughs> right here the combination with this and teach hanley is boom you're in there it's done yeah. it's fucking it's golden so use the link it is t-i-e-g-e dot com slash raw talk boom and get that amazing deal and that free gift number one podcast in the world back to our guests let's go i gotta say this uh i was hurt by you when just the whole trajectory of our relationship and really? i'll tell you why and i don't think it's anything malicious yeah you know what i'm saying it's not anything malicious but it was like when you first came around i remember big rob was telling me like yo uh this dude brandon want to link with you he want to do a uh a video with you or whatever train whatever and big rob will always bring people to me right yeah because i'm like this anti-social kind of you know what i'm saying and i'm like who like okay whatever i said you like him I'm like yeah all right cool and then we just bonded, we connected, you know what I'm saying? Like like how that video I reposted the other day? Yeah. 
that's what I talk. That's the fuck I'm talking about, right? Right. Because there's a lot of people that come around, but they're not down to go to hell like that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I'm like, fuck. That shit like, was fun. Even if you can't do it all, let's go. Let's try because we're gonna motivate you to get it. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. like it's like like boxers, two fighters. They talking all the shit in the world before before they fight each other, right? They both fight like men. Whoever wins, wins. Whoever loses, loses. They best friends after that. Yeah. Cause they respect that man going to hell. You know what I'm saying? Like a man with his head up. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, that's my battle buddy. Like, you know what I'm saying? So, but I felt like, oh, like over time, like, cause my, my shit is all pure. If you see, I don't have a lot of collapse at all. Right? So it'd be like just people I fuck with. You know what I'm saying? But I felt like with you, I'm like, yo, does he fuck with me? Or is it just like, cause of where I'm at on YouTube at the time, you know what I'm saying? And I really, I never had this conversation with you, and I yeah. should have. Yeah. As a, as a as a man and as a friend. Was this was this when we were filming the content? Nah, like after. Okay. Because, like, like say for instance, Simeon, like we connected, we connected. Yeah. We'll have dinner. You know what I'm saying? We'll hang out. We shoot a bunch of fucking shit together. You know what I'm saying? Go to different countries. We, we have been a lot of countries together. You know what I mean? That wasn't just fitness related or work, you know right. what I'm saying? So it's like, like I love, like for me, wealth and the things that I value the most um, outside of my family is deep, meaningful relationships. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like that's the shit. So, you know, I thought that we was on that level, Yeah. but it felt like, it, like nah, fuck this guy, like fuck me, you know what I'm saying? Wow. Because it was just never, I don't know, the, the connection, it was just like, uh, all right, I'm with Fousey Tube, you know what I'm saying? Or whatever, whoever, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I never I never had that conversation with you, you know what I'm saying? And, um, you know, I never said nothing bad about you to nobody, but I know my energy was like, yeah, whatever, it's cool. You I wish you would have, man. I know, I wish I would have too. Yeah. But we're here now. Yeah. This is good for me because, you know, I'm always trying to grow and be better, you yeah. know what I'm saying? So. I don't know if you recall, but you, you talked to me about doing a podcast in 2020 when all of the shit was going on, right? And I was a little reluctant, but I was like, all right, down. But then one of your people called me to, or text me the day of to cancel. Like, how, it was the day of, I like. Well, this must have been, well, this one, was, the gym, was, was that the gym still? It must have been. I don't know, 2020 though. I know it's 2020 for a fact. Huh. Because it was when all of the fucking, the mask shit and like really the um George Floyd and all of that shit was going on. Yeah. So my first reluctance was like, nah, because you were like the fourth or fifth dude, white dude, to want to do a podcast with me during that time. And really? I was like, I don't want to be anybody's black friend. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> the the black the token black dude when the George Floyd shit was cracking. You know what I'm saying? But I, I'm like, yo, that's my guy. All right, let's do it. I was excited. But then they like, they said. Who who were you talking to? I don't know. Whoever your assistant at the time was. Yeah, that's probably, I had some bad assistants prior to, prior to Natalie. Shout out Natalie, the fucking goat right there. Natalie, that's what's She's up. the goat. Yeah, no, I've, 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 I've gone through a few assistants for yeah, sure. Yeah, me too. I'm looking for one right now. Yeah. But my last one, I love, I wish she'd come back. Oh, she man. She went to dental school. I can't let her go anywhere. I feel, don't. Yeah, pay, I, don't even pay, let her, I don't even let her go out. more. Pay yeah, more. I don't even let her go out. Tell them you want more. <laughs> yeah yeah no we got more coming for her we got more coming right. for her but now nah, I, I look the value of, like bro i'm in my car doing shit while i'm driving and shit you know what i'm saying like yeah. i should not be doing you know yep. what i'm saying but anyway but now nah, but you know i always fuck with you you know what i'm saying you remember we seen each other in dallas or some shit or some no 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 maybe the arnold's i don't know it was some expo and we were talking i was in the better bodies booth but it was on the floor and me and you was talking, I was like, yo, I fuck with you, bro. Yeah. Yeah, like that shit is real. You know what I'm saying? Like Rob Bailey, I fuck with that guy. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like me and Rob would hang out when I lived in Miami. When there was nothing, he'd come down and we'd just chill. Nobody even knew because it was like, this ain't social media shit. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Talking about some real life shit that he was working through. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, that's me. Like, I'm that guy. I'm not a clout guy at all. Like, it's a lot of shit that I could do to grow myself. I don't even give a fuck. You know what, yeah. what I'm saying? But 
I like the deep, meaningful connections. You know me what too. Saying? Me too, man. So yeah, that's all. I apologize. I wish I would have known that. I had. I just like. I didn't even think about that for one second. Right. That's so crazy how that mm-hmm. shit works out. I'm yeah. glad you're here now, man. Yeah, likewise, likewise. And I, like I said, I mean, in the beginning, like, just on social media in general, there, there is definitely, I mean, even now, but back then there was very few people that like I really did fuck with. Right. And you were for sure one of them. Right, right, right. Uh, I obviously have had interactions with fucking everyone, mm-hmm. um, but you were always solid. Yeah. So I, I, yeah, I don't know if it was like just what I was trying to do or what I was like what I was trying right. to get, right? Like go after, but I never, yeah, I never once thought like that I at think, all. I think you were just and rightfully so being ambitious for your goals. You know what I'm saying? And you were identifying what steps you needed to make to get to that next level and that's it. So, and that's nothing wrong with that. You know what I mean? Um, I'm the same way, but I'm, I'm like, I'm really grounded in like people. Have you always been ground that grounded though? Mm-hmm. There was never a point where I'm gonna tell you why. Cause I didn't have family like that growing up, like a big family. Everybody lived so far away from each other. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I was the only child. Like I go to a new school and like, dang, he's my friends. Like I love these people. I pray for them at night. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Excuse me. But Kids are fucked up and stupid, yeah. so they always like hurt hurt me. You know what I'm saying? Like talk shit or something. Yeah. Excuse me, but I am very like I'm very selective. When I think I have fucking quality people in my life. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And like people, the people that we all work together, twenty plus years of friendship. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So and then like people I met in the industry that we really fuck with each other is like eight, nine, ten years of friendship. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I have these long, dope ass friendships with people. You know what I'm saying? And um that's 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 that that's my high, that's my drug, I guess you could say. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Also Molly, I'm fucking with you. Also Molly. <laughs> Have you, you ever done Molly? Yeah. No, no, I never did Molly, but I did pure MDMA. That's amazing. Have you done you ever done mushrooms? Oh yeah. Okay, good. Oh god. <laughs> yes. I've done all of the oh, all of the god. psychedelics I've done. Yeah, yeah. The best, dude. What's your favorite? Mushrooms, straight up. I, I have never, I'm, I'm not going to lie. I'm afraid of the next level with the LSD, the acid. I'm afraid of it. I, I would tell you something, man. I'm a fucking, I just know it's more geometrical and I'm like, ah, oh, it's too, it's, it's too intense for me. You're, it's, it's the best. LSD is the best. It's Fuck. literally the best. Have you, how, and now here's the, here's the, the real yes. question, the yes. magic question. Yes. You know what I'm going to say? Yeah. Go ahead, ask me. Have you done ayahuasca? Oh, no, I haven't done that. Have you done DMT? Yeah, I've done that. I haven't done ayahuasca because I don't want to shit on myself. Okay. Or throw up. You so purge. you've done DMT? Mm-hmm. But let me be honest. I didn't blast off on DMT. I smoked it with a little pussy pin. Oh, okay. You know so I, mean? I watched someone smoke it out of a crack pipe. Mm. Like I, a I glass not. pipe. I would not smoke nothing out of a crack pipe. Well, it's not like it wasn't like officially a crack. I just want to make this clear: it wasn't officially a crack pipe. I don't know. I won't even. I won't even hit a bong. It was like a, but it was it was a pipe you would smoke crack from. Yeah, it was a crack pipe. But it wasn't like it was used for crack smoking. Anyways, he he, you get it, you you grind it up, you put in the thing, you light it, right? (laughs) I and I was gonna do it next, and I'll tell you why I did it. His 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 reaction. Yes. So (laughs) he uh he sits on a couch and he's like he sits on a couch like this. And he's like, he's gonna smoke it. He puts it to his mouth, he lights it, she smokes it. He pulls it in, he like sits back into the couch and he like kind of starts to close his eyes. And then his eyes are just going like this in his head, like for 15 with his, minutes. With his eyes closed. With his eyes closed. Yeah. And his eyes are just kind of moving around, like sometimes stable, they're moving around. And then 15 minutes go by, cause I'm like, I'm timing this. He's like, time it. So I time it, 15 minutes. Did you record it? <laughs> yeah, I think I did. Oh, I gotta see this. I shit. did, but this, I don't even know if I have it anymore. I'm gonna put on like an old ass phone, <laughs> like an iPhone one, dude. Anyways, um, he he comes back and he goes, he goes, cause he was like, tell me what I did, and I was like, I said, how long do you think you're out for? And he was like, it reminds you, it was 15 minutes. Right. He's like, this is the scariest shit he ever <laughs> said. It could have been forever. <laughs> so in his mind. Yo. In his mind, bro, I swear to God, like he, and he goes on to explain how like, you know, there was zero uh, like understanding of time and mm-hmm. reference of time and what time felt like, like in his mind, whatever was happening, you know, whatever shapes, whatever colors he's seen, there was no connection to time. Mm-hmm. So it could have li- like, you didn't even, you weren't even aware that there was time to be had or that time ever existed or if you ever felt time. Mm-hmm. So when he said that to me, I was like, oh, fuck no, I'm not doing this. I'm mm-hmm. I'm not doing that's, this. That's interesting. But I want to do it so bad. I want to try right, so it. So let's talk about that. Like he had no concept of time. Zero. Time is not real. Of course, it's not real. It's a construct. We just said time, 
and we created clocks. It's nothing. There is, I mean, we are, we do move forward though. We are aging, you know? We're changing. Yes. We're changing. Aging, changing, but time? All right, so you said we're aging. What does that mean? You don't say getting older. Damn, you got me. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what I was going to say next. Um, very literal. I mean, yeah, like what you said, we're changed, but, we're, but but that's... Listen, we're getting... All right, so we are merely atoms, which yep. are molecules, which are cells, which are tissue, bones, organs, and shit like that, right? So we are all of these very tangible physical things, right? Yeah. However, there is something very... So we're terrestrial, but we have an extraterrestrial component, right? So something that is not of this earth or something that can't be measured, can't be quantified, right? Yeah. And that's our consciousness. Exactly. Or our minds, right? They don't, they don't know what a mind is. Yeah, we, they just, we just say mind, but it's not a thing, right? But there is something <laughs> in us. Because I think about, I'm blown away by the fact that two humans can come together, have sex, and a baby comes out. Yeah, it's a little... With, with bones and organs and a mind, a consciousness. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. A personality. A completely unique one. Bizarre. That, yeah. Right. It's interesting. So time is another one of those things that, listen, I feel like maybe that... Listen, all right. We live in... We, we exist in three dimensions of space-time. That's what they say, right? So what a dimension is, is very basic. It's just a set of directions, Right. So there's creatures that walk this earth that live in two dimensions, right? So we don't even exist to them. If we stand, like let's say a two dimensional creature would be some kind of insect that lives a few hours that doesn't have the ability to crawl and doesn't have a neck. So outside of everything that it sees like straight across, it doesn't exist. So a bird is not a thing to them. There's yeah. no birds, but we know there's birds. If we step in front of it, it just see a sliver of our feet from here down. That's it, right? So we're not real but we are because we can see him right because we're in a three dimension we can see in a two and a one right now scientists they can calculate with math four five i think up to 12 dimensions with equations right so that shit exists you know what i mean outside of ours yeah additional uh, right. uh um dimensions so who's to say there's not some form of some being with consciousness what we call consciousness in that fourth, fifth, sixth dimension that can observe us and we can't observe it, right? Who's to say that our consciousness is not a being in that those higher dimensions controlling us when it sneezes? You know what I'm saying? We get mad. Yeah. You know what I mean? Who knows, right? So, but how are you relating this to time? Because that's not another thing that it's a construct that we in our so, dimension we're so locked in on, and we make it such a thing, but it's not a thing. It ain't. It literally is not a thing. Find time. Yeah. <laughs> it's not a thing. Now, and it can't be measured, right? There are things that exist that we can't see that can that can't be measured, like light. We can observe one percent one percent of the light spectrum. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So many like gas, X uh gamma rays, beta or theta rays, right? Uh X rays, these are things that can be measured with certain types of filters on our eyes, you know what I'm saying? Uh, certain type of goggles to see night shit, shit at night, see heat, whatever. Uh, things have, that, th you're basically saying things that we know are there, but we can't physically see them ourselves. Uh, without contractions. Yes. You know I'm saying? Like we got all of these different- uh, Devices. Uh, satellites and telescopes all out in space. Collectively, they can see most of the space of the spectrum of the color. Right. Colors, you know what I'm saying? So when we see those dope ass images of the galaxies, we could not see that without these telescopes and these satellites and shit. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So we don't see them, but they're there. But there's no measurement for time. It's not. Other than a clock. That ain't shit. So we created it. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, so like a telescope, it sees something in its natural occurring state. A time is just telling us what we programmed it to say happens. You know what I'm saying? Right. It's so weird. But I guess it don't matter. So, d But <laughs> I don't know, bro. I can't help but to think about these things yeah. and ponder on these things. And the greatest, some of the great thinkers of our day who have advanced society by figuring out shit, and it's always with like uh, uh, just pondering on like gravity or whatever relativity, 
and they might present it, right, write it out, but there's no proof of, of it yet. It's a theory. And then over time, scientists, more people, smart people will study that shit and research that shit. And they're like, yo, this motherfucker was right. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? There's a lot there's of stuff There's always like that. an idea. And listen, our ideas, our thoughts, this is so fucking powerful and crazy to me when I think about it. Our thoughts are, a thought is a literal physical thing. You know what I mean? If it, it vibrates on the same frequency, it's like, a, it's like a light wave. It's like the same thing. You know what I'm saying? And it can be measured. You know what I'm saying? CT scans, all you this shit. You can see the activity. You can see where this, oh, our vision comes from back here. You, and you're angry, it comes from here. You're mad, it comes from the limbic system. All of this shit, right? So the, our thoughts, everything, like, like, people, like people are always saying, like, I hate when people are like, well, that's not natural. I'm like, everything's natural. Like, this shit is natural. You know what I'm saying? This shit comes from someone's mind, brain. You're talking about the idea. creation of this thing? Yeah, the manifestation of it, right? right? Because it's an idea, it's, it's a thought. And for the people listening, he's referencing the mic, by the, the way. Microphone, I'm sorry about yeah. that. Everything is a thought. It starts out as a thought. And yeah. I say thoughts are real, we got it. We got magic. We got magic in these fucking phones. The fact that we could be across the world seeing each other real time. Yeah. Talking to I'm I'm still fucked up over a record. Yeah. How the fuck does a record play music? Yeah, you talk about the one on the Yeah, I don't even understand that shit. Yeah. I mean there's definitely science behind that. Yeah, Someone yeah, could explain sure. this, but you're right, that concept. There's science behind everything. Yeah. It's a process behind everything, which is incredible, right? Even explained, I still won't understand a lot of it. I ain't yeah. that smart, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But Me it's, too. It's, it's right, it's wonderful to think about and you know, who knows, maybe at some point humans will figure out time or consciousness. Like what the fuck I is think consciousness? So. I think so. I hope it'll take a long be, fucking time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe not. I hope not. But, yeah. I wanna one, see it. I would love to see but, it. But but hold on. Did you have you smoked DMT? Yeah, but not I didn't blast off on it though. What did you experience? Just just mild, like relaxed. Well, the day I did DMT, I did DMT, LSD, okay. shrooms, okay. and alcohol. Yeah. But nah, I had the time of my life, have fun. Yeah. I could be blast off on a lot of shit, you would not know it. Yeah. You know what, um, what, what, have you ever had like a really like life-changing experience with mushrooms? No. No? With LSD though, yeah. LSD, mm -hmm. well, it, describe that. So one day it was me, T, my older sister Jessica, just come back, fuck school. Jessica <laughs> and my homie Andre, Andre Berto, the boxer, and we was filming, it was a content day. And LSD, look, I found that it gives me, fuck, just so much uh, like, First of all, it makes me super positive and happy. Yeah. You know I mean, I'm, I'm f overflowing with creati creativity, right? And it gives me a lot of mental stamina. You know what I mean? So, all right, fuck it. I'm gonna take it to sex. Having sex on LSD, every time I've had sex on LSD, they're like, this is, I've never experienced anything like this. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because you have, men you creative, <laughs> yeah. right? You're, you're, you're loving. Yeah. You love this motherfucker. You're more in tune. And you have mental stamina. Like that's way more powerful than physical stamina. Our if our brain is good, we're good. Yeah. So so yeah. So anyway, so I took it this particular day because I wanted to like knock out some dope content. This was 2020. Um and I fucked up. I so with the liquid, you have to dilute it, right? Yeah. And I never did that because I'm I'm lazy. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, <laughs> I, I, I can figure this shit out. Yeah. So I used to figure it out like Eyeball it. the dropper. I'll fill it up and then let it out. And then a little bit that stay in the bottom of the bowl, the ball, that's all I need. That's yeah. a whole hit. Maybe a little bit more than a hit, but that was good for me, right? Right. So this particular day, I'm moving fast, running, going, I don't feel nothing. Oh no. Yeah, and then the last one I felt a whole, Oh shit. it was shit. a whole dropper. I was like, fuck. <laughs> Try to spit it out, but it's wrap. Right. Yeah, it's too late. So I like, Fuck it, let's see what happens. I ain't tell nobody and shit. So we, we get to the gym and it started kicking in when I got to the gym, but like normal, like feeling good. I'm doing TikToks and shit, like dancing, like having fun. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but know. I'm just jolly, jovial, you know? And then it started coming on more and more and more. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I had a conversation with myself. Like I was telling her, I'm very aware of what these drugs do, right? Right. So. I know that it's just binding to my two-way serotonin receptors for X amount of time, and then it leaves. So if I'm uncomfortable, fuck it, it'll go away. Yeah. So but I was not uncomfortable, so I'm looking at the camera. I've never seen wild shit, right? The most you would see is distortions. 
but this distortion was kind of like extra, you know what I'm saying? So the camera's on the floor. We like halfway through the workout by the time it's like fucking with me, right? So I'm looking at the camera and I say- So you're to training my, on, on LSD? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, look, listen, when I was spar on LSD, it's like I'm cheating. Yo, that's- So much better, so much better. Yo, yeah. I don't get tired, nothing hurts, but I see better. Like, it's like you're in slow motion. You know what I'm saying? Yo. I couldn't wait to fight on LSD. You know what I'm saying? So, so anyway, I'm watching this camera melt, right? And in my mind, I said, look, I'm not gonna say nothing to them. They're gonna think I'm crazy. You know what I'm saying? How do I explain a camera melting when I know it's not, right? Yeah. So I ain't saying shit. But I kept looking at it and it's like, fuck, it looked like it's really melting. So I couldn't help but to say like, yo, y'all, I know y'all gonna think I'm crazy, but <laughs> I know this camera is not melting, but it's <laughs> fucking melting into the floor. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I'm like staring at it knowing, it's like trying to stop. Like, it's not happening, stop. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, so then I'm like, it's cool, I'm cool, I'm cool, whatever, let's go, let's go. Let's try to finish it, cause I don't want nothing to impede work, right? So then I fucking get my phone to text one of my boys, like, yo, I fucking took some LSD. But the picture on my phone was my daughter, and I just started crying. Oh, it took you. Cause I love her so much. It's yeah. like, it, it, it's like over so much love. I'm like, fuck, look at you, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. I'll call like, yo, my have Ivy FaceTime me, please. I need to see my daughter right now. You know what I'm saying? I love it. She finally called, like, baby, I love you. What are you doing? Hi, daddy. Like, oh, she's, when she spoke, I'm like, oh, fuck, I'm crying and shit. <laughs> yeah. Not sad. She must have been like, what the fuck are you on? Yeah, just happy, just loving. Yeah. So, all right, all right, y'all, let's go. Let's, let's handle this shit. Oh, and I was trying to text my boy Amir, and <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, why am I doing that? But the, the letters is moving from my fingers. So, I'm like, trying to, Catch it, catch it, you know what I'm saying? So that was the extent of visuals. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Look, they always say, oh, don't look, in, look at yourself in the mirror. I went in the bathroom, like, let me see. Normal. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Everybody's face was normal. So I like, fuck it, let's do this shit. So my depth perception was a little bit off, right? And yeah. we're training with weights and shit and all of this athletic shit. So I'm like, I'm trying. I never want to look, to seem vulnerable ever. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, I can, I got it, I'm good, let's go. Like in general? Yeah, mm. like physically, like okay. I, I broke my foot one time, nobody even knew it, I didn't post it. But I had to fly from Phoenix to AZ, and I'm like, I'm not taking that boot, I don't want nobody to see me walking with that boot. But that was stupid, because I'm walking like super slow. You make it worse too. Yeah, because yeah. I couldn't like lean off on my foot, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because of my toe, but anyway, that's how stupid I am. So I'm walking, and I'm very uncomfortable because the floor, it's hard for me to measure the depth, the depth <laughs> perception. I know this. So I'm like, is it there or down there? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Kind of like when you don't know when the last step is on, a, on the stairs. Yeah. So I told Jess, Jessica, I'm like, just take me home, fuck it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Sorry, y'all, we'll finish this. So I get in the car and I'm, I'm still trying to hold on. She's hold, driving. Hold like, on to what? To like being normal. Being normal, yeah. got it. But it was just, I took too much. Yeah. So something just like, just submit. Yeah. So I just like, fuck it. I just put my head back and just chilled. And the ride was fantastic. You know what I'm saying? As soon as you let go. The physical ride in the car, it felt like I was just like on a roller coaster through space. You know what I'm saying? My eyes were closed and I was just zooming through space, right? And I had an experience there that we could talk about it another time. But when I got home, it was him, it was Jessica and Elijah. Everybody's at the crib. I go all the way to my room. My sanctuary is my bathtub. You know what I'm saying? Close the door, put my little Galaxy shit on, and fucking ran a hot tub and just fucking chilled. Yeah. And while I was there, you know, what it does is it intensifies the things on your heart and your mind. It makes For it sure. bigger, right? So if it's negative, it's gonna be bigger, right? And I don't think that it was negative, what was on me, but it was things that I needed to address. You know what I'm saying? Issues. And one was with my, my good friend right here. And, you know, I'm in the tub and he comes to, he's there, right? Not physically, but my issue right. with myself about him. And it was me like being rude or pushy, like and work shit. Like when we go in, I'm like ar ar aggressive and you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I was like, yo, you are a fucked up friend. Like how dare you talk to him? Like Towards that? yourself. Yeah. Yeah. So I got out the tub. He gonna think I'm lying. He always say I'm lying because he cried, but <laughs> <laughs> nah, he didn't cry. I put on my towel, my robe, went downstairs like, bro, I cried, but I was like, bro, please forgive me for not being a good friend. 
Like I said, I love you, bro. I need you. You're a good father. You're a good friend. You're a good like business partner. Like everything, bro. I'm so sorry. Whatever, whatever. And we just hugged it out. Then I went back up up to the tub and just fucking relaxed and zoned out. And then it was one more issue that was an internal issue with myself that I resolved, right? And after that, it was good. It was Gucci. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, I told my son come up, come upstairs. And I'm talking to him, I'm like, son, don't ever be like me. Like, don't ever be like me. And he's like, huh? I was like, look, I, all my life I had to be the man. You know what I'm saying? That is not the way. It, it, it robs me of joy. And I want you to be happy. You know what I'm saying? When you say be the man, what do you mean by that? Being the man. Like, like I'm the guy. So all the pressure's on me. And I want it so I can show everybody I can handle it. Okay. I take care of everybody. I pay for this. I pay for that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That shit sucks. It's not... It doesn't suck because it's what I it's who I am now. You know what I'm saying? But I would prefer for him not to live like that. Yeah. Because it's, it's it's you're gonna get let down by people, right? Um, everything's gonna make you sad when people are not meeting your expectations of how they yeah. should treat you because you're doing so much. But they're not asking you to do all of this. And yeah, people are gonna accept. They're gonna receive and take. They, yeah, that's that's human nature because you're giving it, you're offering it. You know what I'm saying? Right. So, you know, and I've done the most, bro. And it, it always hurts me. You know what I'm saying? And once again, remember earlier I talked about me being better at communicating, right? Yeah. And it, there's times, like, especially in a romantic relationship, I'm like, I'll buy you anything, but I can't tell you this or that or the third. You know what I'm saying? I'm not good at certain things, so I mask it with gifts and service and, you know what I'm saying, protection and shit that's easy for me to do. But that's not the vibe. I should be doing things that is out of my comfort. You know what I'm saying? Especially with the opposite sex or with friends and relationships in general. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, because that's how you, you, you build the best relationships in general. Right. It's like, it's not through the things, challenges shit. Not with things. Yeah. When you have a lot of money, buying somebody something is not, it's nothing. Yeah. And listen, even if it's something to, that they could never buy on their own, if it's nothing to me, then it's nothing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So... These are things that I I realize over time, but anyway, that's why I want to communicate better so I can be a better dude. But being the guy, you don't really learn those skills. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You got shit. You know what I mean? So I was telling him, don't ever be none of that. And yeah, me and him had a good talk. I cry. He see me cry. He'd never see me cry. Like, yeah. So, uh, but we had a loving moment. You know what I'm saying? Then after that. I told everybody, yo, y'all could go. I'm good. And it's coming down. It was like a 12-hour, 14-hour vibe. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, you took a lot. So the highest part was gone, and then it come down to where it's like more euphoric. Like I took a hit or two hits, right? Yeah. And that shit is great. You just feel good just chilling. You feel content. You love yourself. You know what I'm saying? You chilling. So one thing I was dealing with was me lying to myself. You know what I'm saying? Being the man. And I give you an example. I tell you what happened. Like so that night, so I'm fucking vibing. I got a playlist. I, li- I have an eclectic taste of music, very diverse taste, right? And it's like it'll go from fucking Nas to Guns N' Roses. You know what I'm saying? Fire or Aerosmith. And it was a um, the song no Metallica. Nothing else. Ma- nothing matters, right? Yeah. And I'm huh. like vibing to this shit, bro. And I'm like, yo, I get on IG and I, my IG is very like workout shit, regular, not yeah, like yeah. life. So I'm like, yo. I'm in a robe, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yo, y'all hear this shit? Like, listen, I'm, I'm wanting to feel what I feel. I'm this is at the end back. of your trip? Well, this is during the euphoric, the euphoric okay. time, so, yeah. so, our time. So, um, listen to this shit. So, this girl that I used to hang out with, just casually, she was like, DM, like, what are you doing? I was like, I was sitting in the center of the universe. She was like, what? I said, I'm in the center of the universe. Would you like to join me? On my way. Phew, she comes over with her friend, right? And they were a little lit, and then they were drinking, and they was, we was in my room. My house is a vibe. My house, does, I got all like hue lighting everywhere. Yeah, me too. And, yeah, and <laughs> galaxy shit. And so it's just a vibe, you know what I'm saying? And it's all about vibes for me. You know what I saying? agree. I think so, period of life, bro. 100%, yes. bro. So, cause that makes life, that's the seasoning for your life. Yeah. I can't go through life bland. I can't do that. Yeah. Like now, nah, cool. I'll go back to sleep. Yeah, fix this shit. You know what uh, I'm saying? Like yeah, I, I gotta have shit the way I want it. So anyway, 
So they chill, they sit on the floor and I'm sitting in my favorite, I got this like gliding chair. It's so fucking comfortable and satisfying. You remember rocking chairs? Yeah. But it's the evolution of that, it glides, it goes back. It just feels, the fuck? it feels great. Order Amazon. <laughs> yo, like, I need to check out, yo. Referral t- link. Remind me to get that, <laughs> that fucking gliding, gliding chair. chair. And it has a thing you put your feet on and it glides too. Bro, it's the best shit ever. You still like today? This I have, yeah. Okay, it's in my, I got a big ass bathroom, so it's in my bathroom. And I just be in there just fucking rocking back and forth. You know what I'm yeah. saying? It's the best shit. Dog. It might be for pregnant women. Listen, fuck but, it. If, yeah. if it's good, it's good. It's, it's like 300 bucks, Amazon. So, and I bought that from Arizona years ago. I oh, had so it out there. you've been on a gliding chair. Yeah, so I, it was so important to me. I brought it with me. Okay. So, so I'm telling them like my experiences that day, and they like just like looking at me like. <sighs> so <laughs> yeah. Then like the one friend that I have, like the girl that I hang out with, I didn't know the other girl. She's hot, but like I'm like researching her. Like they they just came from a strip club, so I'm looking on this one's to find her. To see what she's about, right? And oh, she's she got a full on husband. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh shit! Oh, that's interesting. And I'm like, your brain works better, right? So I'm listening to them, and she slipped up and talked about her boyfriend. Well, she she talked about somebody, and she said, "Oh, the guy. Oh, your your man." And she tried to shush her up, and I'm just analyzing all of this shit. So I'm like, "Oh, this is so unpure." You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And dishonest, right? So they start making out. And the liar in me is like, oh yeah, you wanna fuck them. So smash and be the man, right? But at this point, I'm like, I'm not lying to nobody, especially myself. So I'm like, hey, I appreciate y'all for coming and hanging out, but you know, I just, I just wanna be alone. You know what I'm saying? I'd like for y'all to, you know, to leave. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And they were like, just confused. I was like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I gotta leave. Yeah, it was more comfortable at your house probably, you know what I'm saying? Like whatever, so, and they fucking left. And I just had the time of my life, just chilling that night, you know what I'm saying? Um, because before I would fuck them because it's two girls that wanna fuck, so I gotta do it, cause I'm the man. Yeah, they can talk about just it. on principle. We have videos and they can have it and whatever the fuck, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But that's not, I don't wanna do that. I want some, I want a special situation. Even if we're not together, if we're friends, right? And you're, you're honest with me, and you're not hurting your fucking husband or potentially hurting your yeah, husband. Yeah, that's fucked. I don't want to be involved in that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But but the LSD or the psychedelics bring you close to that truth because before I'd be like, I don't, give, I don't know him, I don't give a fuck. But that's fucked up. You know yeah. what I'm saying? That is really horrible. So I don't think I had that kind of self awareness before I took that shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? Now, so this is the thing that I've learned, at least through my experience with psychedelics, is like, it, it makes you aware of what your mind is already capable of, like what it's already kind of doing. Mm-hmm. Um, so once you learn that, like- It's locked in. Yeah, exactly. You, it's not like you forget it. Like you kind of, you learn something, you're like, oh wait, my perception could be shifted this way because of these things. Like like you said, you realize like, you saw that and you're like, wait, I don't want to lie to myself. That, that was the right. key there. Yeah. And you're like, okay, you knew what she was doing, willing to lie to herself right. in her situation, right. but you were willing to do it for yourself. Right. I think it's really important for people because I, I don't, you know, I hear people hear these stories and they're like, oh, I want to take a bunch of like drugs and this and that. I think um, you got to use these as they're like intended, as like legit medicine, mm-hmm. like for healing, for overcoming things, for learning. I don't think learning. so though. You know, do you think you just fucking take them? I think you should do it for whatever reason you want to. Straight up? Yeah, because why like, who am I to tell somebody what they should do? That's fair. You know what I'm saying? That's fair. As long as it's not hurting somebody. Yeah. All I'm saying is, like, my, my, from it, my perspective. It may, we feel it's better to take it for medicinal and therapeutic purposes. Yeah, or just go into it at least setting some sort of intention mm-hmm. with, like, why you're doing it. Right, Like, right. not just taking a drug just to take a drug. Yeah. Like, I'd rather someone, you know, again, this, I can't tell you how to live your life. Obviously, yeah. I know that. We yeah. can't do that. I've right. fucked up so many times in my life. Right. but. At least what I'm saying is from what I've learned over my experience in doing this shit is every time that I set my intention of why I'm doing it, mm-hmm. the, the outcome almost like was greater, was better. I learned more from the experience. Yeah. Unless you just want to go take drugs, just take drugs. I think that's the best means. case scenario. But yeah. there's times when I just want to take drugs to have yeah. fun. Yes. You know no, no. It's, and I, you know, that should be all right. You know yeah. Saying? So if I have a bad time, it's on me. Yeah. But that's never happened. So I think the best case scenario is for people to go. First of all, friends of mine that want to try, like, meditate first. You need to, like, meditate, like, because that's, all right, so psychedelics 
is to meditation what steroids is to training and getting your body in a in a place naturally faster first. you know what i'm saying yeah. it'll accelerate it but get it there first yeah you, know what you don't saying? know the principles get it there first so i feel like you'll get the best outcome Cause i know people that just started out just juicing and they stop and they look like they never worked out before they didn't build a foundation no foundation and yeah. they're big and weak you know what i'm saying yeah. so the same with the psychedelics i think it's better if you are practicing mindfulness practicing yes. meditation doing things like sitting in suffering and pain sometimes you know what i'm saying and dealing with it properly that helps you for that situation because self-awareness i think is what prevents people from having i think that's what why i've never had a bad situation with psychedelics because i know what's happening yeah it's not magical it's not i'm not in another universe i'm right here you know what i'm saying yeah i'm getting uh an uptake of serotonin and dopamine so i'm yeah. happier you know what I'm saying? If I get way more, my brain's more connected. You know what I'm saying? I'm yeah. more creative. So I understand that shit. But people need to understand these things. I think it's best to know what you're putting in your body. Yeah. A lot, it's crazy. Like people will take shit, they don't know shit. Like, oh yeah. Or the source, look, my source, that's my guy. But I was, I did everything but threaten him <laughs> for like- and it's not I, me by the way, guys. Nah, I'm nah, not a drug nah. dealer, okay? For, for MDMA, I like, I don't want Molly, I don't want ecstasy, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Molly is MDMA cut with heroin. Yeah. Ecstasy is MDMA cut with meth. T tweak. And listen, yeah. I'm not saying that that's not, I'm sure it's way better than just I've MDMA. I've done all those things. I'm sure it's great. Yeah, it's, it was but, intense. But I just don't want the after effect. Yeah. The hangover shit. Yeah. And with MDMA is no hangover. Yeah, it's like Yeah, calm. and you wake up fine the next morning, I'm in the gym training, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. But you can't take that a lot, that kind of shit. Well, it doesn't work if you do. Yeah. I try to do like Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Sunday is nothing. It's like, this shit don't even work. Do you try, you've tried that? Yeah. Damn. I couldn't. I've always been afraid of like overdoing of shit. Of the MDMA, the pure? Yeah. Of, of anything. I'm just okay. afraid of overdoing anything. They're, see, they're so mild to me, bro. But I, it take a lot for me to get a lot. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I just don't, maybe I metabolize shit super fast. Yeah, I do but too. Even like alcohol, I could drink 18 shots and be chill. And then it's gone in a couple hours, an hour or so. You know what I mean? Yeah, your body you drink? Uh, I, I do on occasion. Right. It's not like a consistent thing where I'm right. like, I want to go drink. Yeah. But I'll drink here and there, mostly for celebration or if we're filming some fucking video or some shit, I'll fuck around. Right. But I don't drink like. From 2009 to 2020, that was my first time having a drink or any drug or anything. In 2020? 2020. That's interesting. I never did drugs before. Psychedelics and all that. Yep. So would you say, so this is a really good question for you then. Would you say that um, not necessarily drinking, but like psychedelics has like changed your life? I think it's um, enhanced me to an extent. Not yeah. Nothing crazy, but all right. So when I did the heroic dose, which led me on a heroic journey, that's what it's called on the LSD. I think for six months, I was a way better human being. You know what I'm saying? So like I asked Sean, like, is it different? He's like, yeah, you're so pleasant, polite, like better. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's interesting because the same thing he said about me then, I remember when it faded and I'm back grumpy and shit and normal, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but when, um, I don't know, I started trying to get back to myself, because 2020, I also stopped doing a lot of work on myself. You know what I'm saying? And I think that that six months or so that that LSD just stayed with me, I didn't really feel a need to, to meditate. I wasn't fasting anymore, none of that shit, right? So when it kind of faded out, I was still just regular, a regular guy, you know what I'm saying? So I started back my work and all my healing maybe about three, two, three months ago. And he feels like I'm back on that level of when I was doing LSD back then. Separate of LSD. Yeah, cause I haven't done LSD in over a year. You yeah. know what I mean? Not for nothing bad, I just, it so just, it don't fit in my life right now. You know when you say all the work that you started a few months mm -hmm. ago, what is that consisting of? The meditation? Meditation, yeah. fasting, okay. reading like a lot, you know what I'm saying? And tapping into just being more conscious and aware of my mind and my spirituality, you know what I mean? Yes. And things of that nature. And just doing things to be a better person, being a more patient person, yeah. you know? And not dealing with, not acting on emotions. Because look, there's a lot of times that I have acted on emotion and I really wanted to. I didn't want to take the high road, like I don't want to, you know what I'm saying? So that's a that's a very low frequency that I was vibrating on. That's a just animalistic, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. 
And I, I'm not an animal. Yeah, well, I am. We all are, but I was acting very animalistic, which ain't yeah. cool, you know? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Bro, it was amazing, man. I'm glad I got to catch up with you. Hell yeah. Like, genuinely. Nah, for sure, bro. I'm glad. I, we, gotta, I, we gotta link more. Sure. Yeah, I wish I wish you would have told me about that sooner. Cause but, I, you know, we're all busy, too. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And it might be a thought that's fleeting, and then I'm off doing this or doing that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, um, but yeah, I don't know. It's just... It wasn't like the biggest thing in the world. Yeah, I get it. But it's it like, eh, okay. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. I don't know. Everybody moves different. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And nothing's right or wrong. It's just different. Yeah, for sure. Mm. So, okay. So at the end, just just so, I don't know if you know or see the podcast, but at the end of every episode, we do audience questions. We answer three audience questions. Natalie, do you have your mic over there? Yes. Okay. Tell them how they can send us questions. So you could send your questions at ask raw talk at gmail.com yeah. or you could do it through dm on our instagram page which is which is get raw talk yeah okay. are we live right now no we're not live okay. no okay. that would have been amazing if we were live yeah. but no i'm gonna sort that out okay. she's just gonna she's got questions already because people send all those emails in mm -hmm. um and and then she'll just give us some of those and we'll answer okay, them dope. um do you but before we get into that do you have any more questions for me yeah <laughs> i think it's probably better off because my questions is juicy oh really right? yeah Fuck, we gotta there... we gotta have boundaries set before we go into that kind of shit on camera. Got you know it, saying? got it. You don't want to try? Maybe we just cut it. Just, just try nah, it. I'm not gonna, I already know it's not gonna be okay. <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay. All right, so we'll save that for later. We'll do it off camera. <laughs> yeah. Um, let's get in some of these questions. I love, I love it. I'm excited for this now. Go so ahead. it says, hello, I watched the podcast with Brad and Selena, and he had spoken about anxiety. I would like to say that I've been addicted to marijuana for the last two years, but every time I smoke now, my anxiety goes crazy and I have a major panic attack. Uh, I've been taking prescriptions, but I don't want to get addicted to what I'm taking, um, mm. antidepressants and so on. So it says, I feel like I need a gateway drug, but marijuana is no longer it. I hear Brad talk about microdosing mushrooms as well. Um, does that help with anxiety? Okay. Also, I cannot consume alcohol anymore because the hangovers are the give them the worst anxiety. Okay, listen. First and foremost, this is really important to be said. I'm not a doctor. Like, I can't prescribe you or tell you what you should or shouldn't do in relationship, especially if you're taking like um, antidepressants, etc. I'm definitely not a fan of those kind of drugs. I think there's there's different ways to get a similar effect, and I do think mushrooms can be really beneficial in that sense. And <clears throat> there's actually a lot of studies coming out where they're showing like similar results to what an antidepressant would do for you, but like results that are staying with mushrooms. Now, again, with that being said, I can't say, Hey, ditch these meds and do this. I would, I would recommend, you know, maybe talking to your doctor and figuring out like how soon can you come off of antidepressants? Cause I think there are other ways, unless you have like a real, like legit imbalance. Um, but at the same time, it's, it's like, it's almost like a catch 22. Like for example, I can't say the person's name, but, there's someone that who was prescribed antidepressants. And then I was, I was like, yo, why don't you try and microdose mushrooms instead? And they did. And they fixed their problem without ever having to take the antidepressants. So I'm not saying that's going to work exactly for you that same way, but it is worth some, some thought. And I'm not saying just willy nilly take a bunch of mushrooms. I'm saying like, try to actually take it at a correct dose, a, a small amount. And you know, see what happens but at the same time this is a tough question because like i can't i don't know if yeah i'll chime in go ahead um okay so this is what a lot of people don't know the purpose of all of the research on the classic psychedelics back in the day which was ketamine uh mdma lsd, LSD. and psilocybin which is magic mushrooms were to treat people who were dealing with depression anxiety yeah. and then they threw in ptsd but it was when the antidepressants or the anti-anxiety, when that shit wasn't working. What they would do is typically two, and they're doing this now because the research is back on, two uh, therapy sessions assisted with whichever drug that y'all choose. I've done ketamine assisted therapy, you know, and it's- I've heard it's, good things. It's very transformative. So I wouldn't just do it like on your own, I would get with a therapist yeah, yes. because they're there, you can do it. They'll screen you first to make sure you're a good candidate, right? And then they'll proceed. Oh, they also, I forgot to say this, they also use these drugs to get people off of hard drugs, prescription drugs. Yes. You know what I'm saying? The addiction and cigarette addiction. I don't know if marijuana was in there, but it might be uh, uh, cocaine and yeah. alcohol and shit like that. So. 
psychedelics are very promising to get people off of, away from those addictions. Yeah. But do it the right way, and that's assisted by a therapist. And they, you may not have to do it in person because they'll do like what they did with me is they screen me first. Uh, fuck, what's the name of this? I can't think of the name of the company, but if you Google it, it'll pop up. They screen me, we did these Zoom calls, and then they, they figured I was a good candidate. They mailed it to me, right? Um, and then they they gave me very specific instructions, and I followed this shit to a T, because I didn't want to fuck up. And you know, it was me and my girl, chill day, whatever. I talked to the therapist for 30 minutes beforehand. They gave you a playlist of mask to sleep. And you don't sleep though, but you blast off, and it it felt like love, like I was loved. That's all I can say. They they have you sit there in it for an hour. This is on ketamine, and then after that hour, it just wears off, like they said it did. And then they want you to journal for thirty minutes. I journaled exactly thirty minutes without even knowing how how long. And um, yeah, and that's it. And you're good. Like I don't have any addictions. I was just doing it for. Uh, like dealing with my anger and shit like that. Yeah. And it 100% helped. Yeah. You know what I mean? Absolutely. And I think what he's saying is important. It's like there are avenues you can go about. Like I tried to say earlier when I first answered the question that you can go about doing this in like a really proper way, mm -hmm. not just self-medicating with these things because like the dosing or where you're getting the drugs from, all these things could be a little bit kind of shaky. And mm -hmm. it's like you kind of want to avoid that, especially yeah. if you're really trying to fix yourself mentally, et cetera. So right. um, let's get into the next question. So this one says, first off, big fan of the pod. My situation is that I'm a 22 year old who's obsessed with success. My brother and I both know we'll be yeah. successful and we won't stop till we get there. And even when we get there, we won't stop just at one business. So my question is, how do I get my friends to understand that this is my passion? They feel like I'm closing them off and pushing them away, but I'm not. I love them. They're my homies, but maybe I'm Maybe I am or maybe I'm not. Okay. One last question. How do I get over the guilt of making them feel that way? Okay, listen, you don't. The answer is you don't get them to feel like, you know, what you're doing is right. You tell them exactly like what's important to you. You don't have to be like, hey, fuck you. I'm doing this. Go fuck yourself. But if this is like the thing that's truly important to you, the thing that's going to make you feel like whole as a person, at least at that time, tell them, hey, I'm really focused on this. This is, this is what I want to do. This is what I want to focus on. But that's all you can really do. You can't say, hey, understand me, understand my drive, understand my effort, understand my energy, understand what I'm trying to do. You can like, ironically, the whole thing we're talking about this entire time throughout the podcast is communication. You can work on, you know, literally your communication process with them and just say, hey, like, be, be transparent. This is what I want to do with my life. What do you guys think about it? Like, not everyone's gonna be on the same page as you. You have to understand that. Not everyone's gonna be like, yeah, that's a great idea. You're gonna have some friends that are like, yo, you know, fuck you, that's stupid, or why don't you do this? Or maybe they feel like you're getting farther away from them because of the direction that you wanna go in, and, and they, maybe they wanna like pull you towards them or for whatever fucking reason, but you don't get them to fully understand you. You just try your best to. And that's just through communication and saying, hey, this is where I'm at. Um, I don't know if you'd like to add anything. Yeah, I say, bro, relax. Yeah. Relax. Listen, success is gonna come, but just put in the work. Don't say success, like, you know what I mean? It's just like in the NFT space, because I'm in Web3, I got a lot of things going on. I hate when people name their projects crypto or something. It's like, we know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So success, just work. Just educate yourself, qualify yourself to be excellent at what you do, whether it's a service or a product you provide. Make sure it's the best, make sure you're the best, and fucking work, that's it. Don't run around talking about success, success, success. I don't know anybody to do that, like that's successful, right? Not yeah. saying it, it, not saying it's not, right? But just be genuine at, don't be like genuine at being successful. Be genuine at adding value to people. Absolutely. Whatever that is that makes you successful. Because I, listen, I can only speak on my behalf, like maybe because the fact that I've always figured out how to make money, I don't be thinking about success. Like it just happens, right? It's supposed to. I believe that in my core that I'm always gonna, regardless, I'm always straight, but I wanna be good at the things that I do, you know? So I study, I research, I do things to make myself better. And like, you see me and Brad talking about we meditate and shit like that. Like these are these are little fucking hacks that a lot of people that are free, <laughs> you don't need nobody to do it. So free. That you could do on your own That's going that will level you up. It'll, it'll prime your brain to make better decisions. I call it a GPS for life. 
So, I mean, yeah. it's literally life changing. It is, bro. Yeah. It is. So relax with the success talk and just go and do the things that's going to make you successful, not focusing on the success, the, the outcome, the money. Focus on being successful at helping people. Yeah. Because that's, I'm a conscious capitalist, right? And I am successful because the services and products that I provide are really good for people. They love it and it adds a ton of value to people's lives. So yeah. focus on that part. Focus on that part, exactly. And then also don't focus so much on your friends and yeah. trying to convince them like that you're, you know, you're supposed to do something. Just do it. Start to do it. Start to act. They, they'll see you and your hard work and they'll be like, damn, that shit, he's fucking killing it. Yeah. Let me, let me tap in with him. So yeah, the, exactly. The best way to teach is by example. The best way to lead is by example, not talking. Yeah, facts. So next one. I love these questions. So this one says, I lost my father very young, four years old, and I'm 21 year, um, I'm 21 now. As I've grown, I've come to terms with it, but sometimes the sting and pain comes back. My mom never really got me help as a child, and um, she was dealing with it herself, and she never really put a positive male figure in my household after the fact. So, so I'm kind of at the first stages of learning how to cope and heal now that I'm an adult and out of the house. I know it will go away fully, but I was wondering if you had any tips or advice on how to deal with the stinging or how to deal with the fact that I'll never really get to know him. Thanks for your time. Love the podcast and your ability and willingness to be vulnerable on a public platform. Not many people do it like you. Okay. Motherfuckers always trying to get me to cry at the end of these podcasts. I swear to God. So So here's the deal, man. This is a direct, I mean, I could directly relate to this, this, this thought exactly about not being able to, you know, have your father in, in, in your life the way that like you think it should or, sh- you know, should be. Um, the, the fact is that your life is exactly as it's supposed to be. And I think it's really important for you to understand that. And I've, I've actually had this conversation with so many people in relationship to like losing loved ones is that that person now is not in your life as you see fit in the sense of everyone else has this or they have it like that. That person is now in your life in a completely different way, in a completely different, almost like we're talking about earlier, like we talk about in a different dimension in a sense. So I, I, I don't know at what point in my life, I think I was around like 23 years old where I started to realize like um, because of the pain that I went through in childhood and growing up and not having this or feeling like I wasn't good enough for that, I transmuted that pain into a different type of energy which built the rest of my life, um, which is why anyone cares about the fuck I have to say here in general. So my point is this to you, that pain, that energy is going to be used in your life in a different way. And it, with the time being it, the, the best thing that I could tell you is like that person is just existing in your life in a completely different way. It's, it's less tangible. It's less physical, but the energy that you can use through that, whether it be through the pain and then as you evolve and as you become more comfortable with it, um, it is really life changing. And, and I've said this before in a podcast and I'll say it again. Also understand this fact that you, you, you're going through something that, you know, if you can get through it, which you will, you can get through anything else in your life. Like I genuinely mean that, that I could always come back to that in my life where it's like, man, shit could be so fucked up. You know, I'm, I lost this deal or I lost this money or I lost this friendship or I lost this business thing or whatever the fuck, or I lost all this money. And I can come back to the, the, the sobering fact that like, damn, but nothing's really as hard as what I've already went through. And speaking to you directly, it's just about realizing that. And it's hard for me too, because I get caught up in my own thoughts. Like my thoughts will get carried away with where, you know, how it should or shouldn't be or what I did or didn't have. And I have to constantly remind myself to be like, okay, but where am I at right now? And what can I do with what I have right now? And like I said, man, that, that, that loss of a father or loss of a parent in general, a loved one is, is fucking terrible. But at the same time, eventually it starts to make more sense. It just doesn't always make sense when you want it to. And uh, yeah, that's it, man. I just, I, I feel you and I'm sorry that that happened to you, but I promise you at some point in your life, you're going to look and be like, damn, this makes sense. And it's not though going to be when you want it to be. It's going to be when it needs to be. So that's real big facts. Yeah. Yeah. I I don't really have, uh, I haven't lost my father. I have my father, you know, Um, I love him dearly. We got a good relationship. I lost my grandfather though, you know, and me and him was tight, you know, and um, 
for me, it was more like what you said, man. He's he's still here. I felt this Absolutely. presence, you know. Um, and it kind of like, you know, even though I've made some mistakes in my life, it keeps me from going but so far. Because as if I'm being watched. And I don't yeah. want to disappoint my grandfather or my grandmother for that matter. But nah, man, he what he said, that's, that made a lot of sense. And my condolence to both of y'all because I don't know what that feels like to lose a parent. I just don't. And I'm not looking forward to that shit at all. You know what I mean? Yeah. So my heart goes to you, homie. So just, you know, like he said, take that energy because everything is energy. It's no good or bad. There's love and hate. Just like love and hate is the same energy. It's just we're at on the spectrum it's at and you control that. Yeah. So take that energy and use it for something positive, something good. You know, when you are, I don't know, maybe you're like the patriarch amongst your friends. Maybe you're like kind of keeping everybody on point. Maybe that's your father, like, giving you some wisdom to, to I felt like my grandfather was, like, helping me with my friends, too, like, keeping keeping everybody out of certain situations. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So, you know, uh, allow yourself to receive him, your father, and channel him through your actions and your whatever wisdom that you're sharing on your friends, but not just words, but with your actions. So, yeah. yeah. Don't, don't disappoint your father. What if he's watching you? You know what I'm saying? So I think that'll be a good way to still have them with you. And keep you a, motivated. In a meaningful way. Right? Yeah. That's it. That's amazing. I think it's how we end the podcast. I want to hear what the fuck Mike had to say off camera. I'm really interested in that. Uh, <laughs> um, but if you guys if you guys made it this far, I appreciate all the love. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mike, for coming. Yo, I appreciate you. Let yeah. me say this. Yeah. Super proud of you. You know what I'm saying? You Look, you're a juggernaut in the sport, in the space. You know what I'm saying? You're killing it. So keep fucking doing it as you yeah. will and you're my guy i fuck with you tough you too man for real yes, sir, i appreciate yes, that come here yes, sir. i appreciate it man. i'm glad we got to come here